Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Production Value, my podcast interviewing creators and people who make stuff that I think are uh, cool and fun and interesting and I want to know more. Wow. It's another perfect day in the studio because I have one of my favorite people and the brains behind uh, a series I love so much. It's Anders Norberg with Survivor Maryland, not the founder, but I would say the person who kept it going when it all seemed lost. Anders, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. What a title. The person who kept it going when it seemed lost. Yes, I didn't <laughs> found this organization. No, no, no. But uh, if it weren't for me, it would have ended in 2015. And now it's still going strong in 2024. This thing has been going on for 12 years, which you wouldn't know because it's not all uploaded to YouTube yet. But we're working <laughs> on it. All right. It takes a while. It takes it takes a whole team of just me. Um, right. Hi, I'm Anders Norberg. I'm the current editor of Stryer, Maryland, winner take all a new season coming February 12th, 2024. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to talk about my favorite show on TV and internet, Stryer, Maryland. <laughs> and that's been maintaining for 12 years. That, for 12, that, uh, yeah, that? it's been my favorite show since it first came out um, with the unfinished season one. I went, man, now this is something I want to devote all my free time to. I feel like I want to get sucked into this void. Well, I'm so glad that you said yes, because not only do we have, A, I have a million questions about how College Survivor gets made, but B, I think that with season eight coming out, a season that looks incredible, the Winner Takes It All trailer is an editing masterpiece. Congratulations. Uh, There's so much more to talk about with Survivor Maryland than the first couple of seasons. The first couple of seasons are incredible television. Do not get me wrong. But I also think that there's a lot to discuss when it comes to maintaining something that A, somebody else started and B, has a reputation. And how do you keep that going? And we're going to get into all of it today in the next couple hours. How how much time do you have? Oh, what a good question. Um, As much time as you need or until I get tired. Wonderful. Wonderful. So 15 minutes? (laughs) Let's make it 10. Um, Let's make it a tight 10. Thank you, 10. No, and just, I'm so glad you're here. I think let's start at the very beginning. Let's just 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 begin, right? So such good, yeah, yeah. Let's just start. I just guess if there's start. any place to start, it would be at the beginning. At the start, um, yeah, great point. At first Let there was hit. nothing, and then the Big Bang, <laughs> and, and then there was Survivor Maryland. <laughs> so, back in the year, uh, back before Trump or COVID or any of this. There was a time before, yes, before 2016, uh, when I was but a sweet child coming to college at the (laughs) University of Maryland College Park. Um, Now, I had always been a fan of reality TV. I myself had created many little shows on YouTube that were basically Survivor, but were fake, uh, sometimes using stuffed animals or Pokemon. Um, Yes, yes, I'll come out and say it. I created a series called Total Pokemon Island on YouTube. it's kind of like the show Total Drama Island, which is right. a cartoon made in Canada, except yeah. with Pokemon. Uh, yeah. And I, of course, uh, <laughs> did over 300 videos of this. Uh, oh I God. voiced every character. I animated it on PowerPoint. Um, and you know what's funny? Uh, yeah, and I'm going to say this, and it's not something I'm incredibly proud of. The work I did for Total Pokemon Island on YouTube has gotten more views than anything I'll ever do for College Survivor or any College did, Survivor will ever get. It's just a fact. I did know that. I did know that to- Total Pokemon Island had like a crazy number of views. Do, can you like name a video stat off the top of your head? Like 30K? Like how much was it? So the first episode, I believe, oh man, it, it, let me, I think it's like almost 500,000. That seems crazy. Uh, but it is it is way more than should ever exist for this for this show that the, I made the in Pokemon seventh grade. Pokemon Survivor fans are rabid. Um, no, I'm sorry, not five hundred thousand, only a hundred and sixty-one thousand. Um, something much more reasonable. Anyways, Normal. over millions of views for these uh for these episodes. I voiced them all, and if you want to see them, too bad. Uh, you can probably find it because it is my voice, just a little bit higher. Um. <laughs> Anyway, so I did that for a long time, really loved Survivor and all of these things. When I got to college, um, 
I ended up playing an online reality game because I loved reality totally shows. Get yeah, truly. And uh, it was an alias game, which is to say you're playing this online version of Survivor, but you are playing as, for this one, real Survivor players. You're pretending to be them. So I was Jessica DeBen from Survivor Fiji, who was the first boot. Sorry, spoilers for Survivor Fiji, which came out in 2007. Um, I was the first boot of Survivor Fiji. And um, I played that game great. I was the fan favorite. Anyways, after we all revealed our identities at the end, I said I went to the University of Maryland. And someone went, oh, my God, have you heard of Survivor Maryland? I went, what? They went, it's at your college. And so I was being introduced to something by someone who doesn't go to this college. Uh, And I was like, oh, man, I should look into this. I looked into it, and I got in touch with Austin Trupp, the original founder, and I was like, this sounds so cool. How do I sign up? And he goes, ooh, this is actually my last semester, so it's not going to exist after this. Wow. I know. And I went, huh, well, I really want to play this, but this seems really cool, and if I can't play it, I can always right. take complete control of it. So I started helping out in the fall of 2015 on Survivor Maryland All-Stars, which would later be known as apparently the greatest season ever made. Uh, Nothing will ever be better than it. It was covered in the Washington Post and on many great sites like Redmond Survivor and hailed across Twitter and all sort of Survivor online communities. Right. And and you said, okay, I'll join. And And I said, sure, whatever. Sure, sure, whatever. And I guess I'll follow up on this. I'll circle back Uh, on this idea. Yeah, the first time I reached out to Austin was through a website called Org Universe, um, which is spelled O R G Y Universe. Um, and what? so that's how it's spelled. And it's important because the first time I messaged Austin on Facebook, it was, hey, it's Anders from Orgy um, or Orgy, which great start to any conversation, I'll tell you what. And I think he was confused about which Orgy. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> But that's how I met Austin, and then I started helping out with Survivor Maryland All-Stars, and uh, then I got complete control for the next two and a half years. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what, what happened. What, what grade in college were you? What, what, what's the I word was a that's sophomore. not the grade, I guess? I was, so- I was year? 14th year. I was a sophomore. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, it was... Wow. You know, when you start college, I think a lot of people feel this. When you go to college, you're starting over. You're trying to make new friends. You're trying to find out what you're passionate about. For me, it was like, what do I want to do? Like, what's my big thing in college? All right, I I can get a degree in something. What do I want to spend my time in? And Survivor Maryland provided the best opportunity, which is this is your passion of reality TV. Mm -hmm. It's a passion of making friends by bringing together a community of like-minded people. And it's fun. All right. You know, you can go out to the bars, sure, but you can't do that. Sorry, you shouldn't do that every night. You certainly can. (laughs) Um, You shouldn't. Uh, Not to yuck anyone's yum. But this was like kind of an alcohol-free alternative. Not to make it sound lame. You could drink if you want. But it's like this was something to do on a college campus that was, for the most part, free, um, was fun. It was competition. And – yeah, it brought together a lot of people from a lot of different places that you wouldn't normally see. People from different colleges or different majors, different parts of campus, different yeah. years. I think that's a really good point. I was also like a, a kid in college who really needed friends and also did not have uh, many ways to procure alcohol. So it's like, what am I going to do that doesn't involve alcohol and involves making friends. And unfortunately, that answer was musical theater. So I would have much rather done Survivor, I think, than tried my hand at amateur musical theater again, you know? I could have been saved. Yeah, that's really Survivor. unfortunate to hear. I'm so sorry. I mean, what makes Survivor Maryland or any college Survivor cool is that uh, you do get to make new friends. You do get to be competitive. And this is a great way to, like, find that friend group or find people to start interacting with, or, you know, they throw parties, they have events, there's things to do now, there's people to see, there's something to occupy your time outside of school. Um, So it it was just a very cool experience to have. It was a great way to meet people. And it was 
I think most importantly, just a fun way to spend college. Cause I think mm. there's a lot of pressure to do something or be someone on college, still on your college campus during college to, you know, this is you setting yourself up for the rest of your life, but also not everything should be that serious. All right. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave college usually with a degree. And then it's like, you start real life. Not all the time are you going to use that degree when you go out into the world. Not all the time are the people you meet or the things you do, do during college going to be the end all be all sometimes, but not all the time. And I think Survivor Maryland was just a way to experience something fun. That could be a flash in the pan, um, but you can, have for the rest of your life it can be your fun fact um and it can be the gateway to making friends for the rest of your life or it can just be that moment uh but ultimately it was a very fun cool unique thing to do i have a hypothesis you know stick stick with me here i have found that doing fake survivor uh is a great way to make friends in your 30s and your 20s and 30s when you move to a new city, right? All of a sudden you're meeting all these people in New York that you would have never met before. That's the beauty of Survivor New York. I think the same thing goes for college Survivor where you're coming into a space where you suddenly feel very small fish in big pond. You feel completely out of your element and sometimes you need a, actually a reality check as well. This is maybe my big hypothesis is that one of the best parts about Survivor in general is that I think it gives you a reality check about yourself and you can either take that information and change and not be so obnoxious or you can maintain your obnoxious, you know, 18, 19, 21 year old self. Uh, and I think that sometimes it's a good way to transition into adulthood and becoming a, a different person than your younger, immature self. Do I sound insane in saying this? You know, I think it depends. I think when you're in college, everyone is on the same level of uh, delusional immaturity. Like when you're in college, you're not really an adult yet. Even if you are yeah. legally, you aren't. You just aren't emotionally. Um, and I say that as someone who is no longer a college student, uh, it just happens. Uh, but I think it's great to get those moments. I think what Survivor can bring in like a what can you learn from it? I think on a college campus where you basically make your own schedule, you're setting all of this up, you're the one determining when you do something, how you do it. It gives you a really good sense of autonomy in that sense. You have to set up these meetings. You have to schedule to make you have to schedule yourself to make sure you have time to eat before the challenge or that you do your homework before you come to a tribal or you're meeting up with everyone. It gives you exposure to people you may not have interacted with when you were in high school or yeah. in your college specifically. Um, I think it is a great way to expand your horizons uh, in that same way that reality TV does generally. Like you do get to meet people you don't know. Um, but I think certainly when you leave college, you're in a new city or whatever, it can help you. If you play like, for me, playing an online game, just being fresh out of college with people who have been out of college living as a human for a long time, it gave me more perspective of, huh, I'm really confident for no reason. And that's actually yeah. not good for me. Uh, so I think certainly in your 30s or late 20s, that is the lesson I would take. I wouldn't say college survivors yeah. it's just it's to be more mature. And I would never claim the people of Survivor Maryland benefited from maturity after playing. it. That's a fair point. It's a fair point. <laughs> that's kind of why we love College Survivor, though, right? It's like the... There's something that feels so college about it in a way that I think a lot of reality TV, it's not college, I guess, immaturity. Reality TV has really shifted away from, I think, the very intense emotions over time. I know that sounds contradictory, but like we were talking about Survivor gets very like sad and gets very touching. And hey, here are these, these struggles that I overcome. But I remember like, you know. Flavor of Love reality TV. I remember Charm School reality TV where it was like, can you yell at each other and fight? Great, you're on TV. And College Survivor gets into that a little bit, I find, where it's like the emotions are so high. Everybody's taking everything so seriously. And yet it is the goofiest thing in the world. It is College Survivor. And it, it it's camp. I love it so much. I mean, you have to think of it as in the early 2000s, reality TV was a burgeoning subgenre of show. Uh, and... It really was whatever happens, happens. So you would have the most ridiculous, uh, over-the-top, sometimes 
irresponsible or inappropriate things occur. And it was like, <laughs> whoa, isn't this crazy? Isn't this wild? And as tastes have matured, obviously, it's all become more refined. If you watch any of these mainstay reality shows from their first couple of seasons to now, they are so much cleaner, quicker, and they know what they are now. The yeah. Survivor and Big Brother of today is so much more honed in on strategy, on these relationships, on the game. Whereas in the beginning, it was so much more about personality and so much more about that conflict. That just doesn't work anymore. And I think we as a society definitely don't want to just see people be racist on TV. Uh, yeah, That's what of we course. call politics. Uh, <laughs> but I think what's beautiful about college is that you aren't a full adult yet. You know, you do go to classes, you yeah. do have all these studies, you live on campus or around it. Like, you're not really an adult yet. You may work some jobs. You're not really an adult. Uh, and for the most part, a lot of, if you ever talk to a college student about what's going on in their lives and their drama, you listen and you go, wow, this is such small potatoes. Like, this does not mm -hmm. really matter, mm -hmm. but it's the biggest thing in the world to you. Uh, and... That's what makes College Survivor great is it does have that early 2000s feel of everything is such a big deal. Someone says this one thing, it is the most insulting or infuriating thing. I'm going to react in the most over-the-top way because emotions are high. Your brain isn't fully developed, um, yeah. and you don't really have like a lot to be worried about day to day. Uh, I feel like also – I mean, I remember for me in college, I was very self-conscious. Like when, when somebody hurts your your pride or your feelings, you're very like, oh my God, what is, you know, how is everybody going to interpret this about me? How is this going to affect everything I do? Because everything in college feels very like, how am I being perceived by everybody around me? When you are in college, that is your community. Those are the people you see. It is very small. Even if your college is big, it's still small. You only interact with so many people. In real life, you interact with so many more thousands of people every day. Those small interactions will mean less. That small insult or whatever or whatever will not be as huge. Yeah. It won't be as life affecting. So I do think you're right on that. Like if someone does call out, call you out or belittle you or you do something to harm someone else, that can be so much more. There can be so many more reverberations in college. Yeah. God, I don't miss college at all, but I love talking about it. <laughs> it's like something I don't really miss in, in that place in my life, but I really, I also find particularly um, Survivor Maryland to be fascinating because I was in college when this was happening. This like, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's all um, very relatable to me in a way that I think sometimes as the seasons go on, it's a little bit less relatable or I, I just feel so nostalgic for, you know, like 2016, take a photo of yourself on your webcam before you go out for the night vibes. What a great time I we mean, all lived in. It, look, we all miss pre COVID times. We all miss the early parts of 2016. Uh, unfortunately that's past now, but no, I get it. I mean, there's something so charming about college survivor in that, these are students. They take it so much less seriously. Like, or sure, let me actually, they take it just as seriously, but it isn't serious. When you watch Real Survivor, right. they ground it with, this is the most intense experience in the world. Here they are fighting to survive. They're starving on an island. They're, they're competing to win. And College Survivor, they are students who live in dorms. They don't eat well, but that's not because they don't have access. <laughs> it's because they don't have a lot of money. So they will eat. The, the Kraft mac and cheese, they will eat ramen. Like they will eat the most basic stuff or they don't yep. sleep well, but that's because they stay up till 3 a.m. because they're playing a video game or they just want to or they're drinking every night. Um, but they take it seriously, even though it doesn't matter. Like you go to college to get a degree. You're doing this for fun. And yet somehow you care about this way more. And that's fun. It's fun to watch something knowing it doesn't really matter, but to take it so seriously. You talked to us about taking over. Did you ever think like it was going to be what it became? You know, when, when you're starting your journey and now that you know where it's all ended up, did you ever think like, oh, this is exactly what I pictured when I said, yeah, I'll keep going? So Survivor Maryland was the first college survivor. Um, it was founded in 2012. 
uh, there was no real concept in my mind of what that was. But when I had heard about it, I obviously started watching it and was like, this seems really cool. This is really interesting. And I want to be a part of it. I, when I first sort of volunteered myself to do it, it was because this seemed like a very cool experience. And as someone who had made a Pokemon based survivor, the idea of running something with real people, like seeing all of this happen in real time was enticing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was enlisting myself in this huge community of people who were going to do it across the country because frankly, when I started doing it, they didn't exist. When I started doing it, that's when uh, OSU time and change started. That's when Michigan started. Like these things weren't there when I started. So for me, mm -hmm. it was, this just seems like a cool thing that's happening at my school. Whereas now it's like, Oh, whoa, look at this awesome community I want to be a part of. That wasn't, I wasn't there yet. Um, I think it's amazing that it's there now. And there's so many people who do, there's so many people who do this now. It's so amazing to meet someone who says they've done it just because even if they don't know who I am and I don't know who they are, just to have that same level of, we both did this silly thing in college, mm -hmm. but we both did it at our colleges. Um, it's just very fun. It's a very cool little fun fact we all have. Um, but when I first reached out to him, it was on the level of this seems like something fun to do. And if no one else is going to do it, I might as well. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if no one wants to take it, it seems like it's hard, but I, I have nothing else I'm doing. Sure. It does seem hard. It, it, in, and I have so many questions about how difficult it seems to me, a person who makes television. And I can't wait to find out more. Um how did you feel coming in as the new host? Because I think that what was evident to me watching was that when you watch season six, there's like people who are the siblings of people who played Survivor Maryland before. You have a couple seasons of like goodwill amongst people on campus. Um, I know Austin was like an RA and there was just a lot of, I think, good word of mouth. And you're coming in as the new host. How did you adjust to that? Did you find any difficulties or or strengths in taking over that role? Yeah. So, I mean, when I first started helping out with Sir Ira Marilyn, um, like I was coming in as a crew member. To give a picture, I think people nowadays will probably view any sort of like fan-made production as multiple people helping out. There's a bunch of people on crew just doing things. You go to any sort of live reality game. You've got someone hosting. You've got a bunch of people setting things up maybe filming it, a whole team. Yep. For Austin, it was him and maybe yep. one other person helping film. I came and started helping film. But to all of these people who, at that point, this was all-stars. So they had all played or been involved for a little while. I was a complete stranger who yep. just wanted to help out. For them, their videos had been on YouTube for maybe a year or less. The concept of someone hearing about Survivor Maryland purely through the internet, not through word of mouth, not through I mm. live on Austin's floor or I'm friends with someone who played is weird. I mean, think about your day to day. What if someone's like, oh, your friend group? Yeah, I watched that on YouTube. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean you watched me on YouTube? I'm a normal person who's living my life. I showed up and was like, yeah, I want to help out. I was introduced in that way of, might want to take over, but I'm a complete stranger. Of course, it's mm -hmm. weird that I would want to just take over. I know nothing about it. I would say that it's also weird. I, as a person, I think very few people would regard me as an timid or introverted person. And I don't think I am. I know it's funny. I don't think I am. Um, but I think when you show up to this group that all know each other and you're just trying yeah. to like view it and learn I was a little bit quieter because I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm really not trying to like supersede any of these people who know this better than I do. So I just want to like all, be involved. They're also watch and learn. older than you, which I feel like is such a scary factor when you're in college in particular. I I, I found that just seniors were so like, oh my God, am I going to talk to a senior or a junior? That, that feels like out of control sometimes. Which you know, of course, is like that person's two years older than me. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, in college, it's different. And I was, yeah. at that time, I was like 19, 20. Um, uh, so 
I wanted to help out. I was learning and I got more confident as time went on. But I think it's one of those things where a lot of the people who weren't graduating had a little bit of like wonder and apprehension about me just taking over, but more in the way of like gossipy. Do you think he can do it? Not like they were going to step up and do it, but it was, I mean, ultimately they were just curious if I was even going to be able to do it. Um, but ultimately like no one else is going to do it. So, you know, people talk anyways, I took over. I took all the precautions, got all the supplies, started planning, started casting. Um, that whole first time, I mean, you are jumping into a true unknown. The concept of casting, the concept of planning, the concept of doing all this is even now with all of these college survivors, it's still such a difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that comes naturally. The idea of judging people when they talk to you of what makes a good player, what's something you want to look for, what are the attributes that matter. When you're filming, what are the things you need to consider? When you make a challenge, what are the things you need to consider? How do you run all of this? What are all the things you have to remember? Season six was a course in patience, in trying things out and adapting. I mean, as much as the players are playing and learning to play around the twists in each other, I am learning how to host and what's right and what's wrong. And yeah. I mean, at this point, so many years out, I can look back on all of the mistakes and realize how I could have improved it, what I can do better now. Not that I am hosting or have any drive to do so. <laughs> um, but, you know, you watch and you learn and it's hard. I don't think anyone will ever start hosting any sort of fun little game or production and be perfect at it. But I think yeah. the truth is, if you watch any reality TV show, that happens to them too. They are so many examples in real survivor big brother amazing race any competition show where they have a format or an idea something goes wrong and they change it or a ruling comes out later um they adjust over time the host changes i mean even jeff probst in the beginning he wasn't that involved with a lot of these aspects you know his tribal questions were a lot softer and it was a lot less focused on the strategy and then it's changed he's a lot more of a narrator in challenges He's a lot more involved mm. with these story elements. I mean, that's just, it's what's been required. It just changes. You learn and you adapt. Um, although I would never say I'm a Jeff Probst. I'm just saying that is not a <laughs> unique thing to any one person. Everyone has to adapt and change. Yeah. And learn. Of course. And also, you are really jumping into it feet first. I mean, to think about the fact of like joining a club and then immediately being sort of in charge of that club in a way that is so beyond anything that anyone normally does, right? Like you're hosting everything. You have to, you have to be at every single event that oh. occurs throughout the season. Imagine any club, you're in any club, someone joins in and immediately becomes the president of that club, <laughs> leads the club. You would be like, what the hell? They don't know this club. <laughs> They don't know us. They don't know what works for us. And they're imposing their own will. That's kind of what it's like. It's a lot less centralized than that. And I really was every element of the club. Like I was the one mm -hmm. casting and setting up all of that. I was the one procuring everything, setting up all the challenges, being everywhere, filming as much as I could, editing it. Like I, the way it was when I was hosting was basically I was doing a, ma a lion's share of everything. I was doing a majority of it all. Um, there were people who were helping out, people who had been a part of it for a while. And that was incredibly helpful. But it was also yeah. like it's hard when you are a sophomore trying to take charge of this club without any pre without it, without any foundation on it uh, and to sort of have that element of what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, why should people listen to you? What what right. reason? With what authority do you have in this moment on these people? So there was a lot of like second guessing my decisions, and there was mm -hmm. a lot of like questioning from crew members, which is fair. I didn't know what I was doing, and I think it's hard running any sort of thing for anyone is always going to be difficult. To like, I'm in charge. You need to listen to me, but you also need to respect what I'm saying. And I'm younger than you and I don't have as much experience with it. And I'm just trying my best. I don't know what I'm doing, but I need you to believe I do. What makes College Survivor so interesting is if you're on a real show or you're in a real experience, like your boss is your boss because 
they're your boss yeah. or the host is the host because that's what they got hired to do. You're not here to question the host. I am a college student. You are also a college student. I'm a sophomore. You're a junior. You're a senior, whatever. Like, yeah. what have I done to earn your respect in that way? Nothing necessarily. You just have to trust that I have that and you need to listen to what I say. I make up the rules, yada, yada. So that's 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 what makes College Survivor so special is that everyone is kind of on the same level. I go to the same classes you do. I am living in a dorm, but I'm also – the host, the person in charge, and I need you to trust me. And that causes its own drama, but I think that's the beauty of it, right? Like, what mm-hmm. makes me the authority? Uh, I say I'm the authority. Thank you. <laughs> you had the torch passed to you. Yes, literally. Uh, literally. I, I did have that moment. But in the same bit. way, it's like Austin got authority by the end of it because they knew him, they trusted him, he had experience. For me, I was a complete stranger who showed up and said, I'm in charge, and uh, mm. you just have to live with it. And there were struggles with that, and I learned how to at least prove I was capable enough. But I think that's going to happen every time someone takes over. Like, you're not older than me. You haven't done this as long. Why should I trust you? And that's the struggle, right? Why should anyone trust anyone? If you can't trust people in the game, why should you trust the host? Well, they're the host. Uh, well, Yeah. But, Why should I trust production? You know, you don't have to, but that's the rule. So, hey. But yeah, I would say what made it a struggle, uh, um, what made it a struggle was certainly that you're jumping in, you have no experience, you don't have these relationships, you're relying on people to trust you, and you have to prove you're worthy of that trust. And I think that's a challenge no matter who you are. And, uh, I think I got it by the end of it, but <laughs> yeah, season six is such a, I think anytime someone takes over, it's always such an experimental moment of like trial by fire, prove that you are capable of running the show because no one can help you when you're, when you're doing it. Like people will try and advise, but you're ultimately running the show. Yeah. And I think also like, that's why it's funny. I feel like I, I, I found the fans of Survivor Michigan to be so much more forgiving to each like new host than I remember the sort of vibe of like, Oh, Austin isn't going to be here forever. I, I, I think that people, you are sort of trial by fire also via like the audience because the audience is so not used to this change. They're so used to, you know, Phil Kogan's hosted the amazing race for 20 odd years and he's going to keep fucking doing it until the world blows up. Like there's no, uh rapid changes of hosts and i think you kind of got the brunt of it also like the change from you know the survivor maryland youtube to survivor maryland youtube 2 which i think is like such an obvious change to me but it it's just amusing how i think you really caught not only it in the game but also then via the internet in some ways in the same way we were the first college survivor i was god it's so sad to think about i'm one of the oldest college survivor people um and i hate that uh i'm very young anyways it's very interesting to be like yeah we're the first college survivor to get a new host so i have to do that and then when austin started survivor maryland he didn't think it would be anything of renown he just did it for fun um so he made the youtube account with his actual email so yeah he wasn't yeah. gonna give that to me i mean like i asked but i totally get the don't give me your email. I w- Look, I wasn't going to do anything with this email, I promise. But <laughs> what about the people after me? I'm – this channel, like, I will give it to whoever. It doesn't have to be Survivor Maryland Gen 2. It can be for whoever. Specifically because, like, why should we segment it however? Like, if we have an audience, we have an audience. Um, but Austin didn't think about that at that time. Now, yeah. the college survivors make specific things for it. But for Austin, that was his regular Gmail with regular YouTube. So he had his college videos on there and then Survivor Maryland. So it's like, that happens. Um, how can you prepare for something to suddenly be a cult uh, cult success? <laughs> just suddenly be a cult, period. It just, well, you know, well, you tell me college survivor is into cult, like, kind of is. Hey, I, I kind of agree 100%. We go outside, 
we all bring fire, we yell and we cheer and we do our little <laughs> rehearsed lines and then someone goes home. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's a ritual, there's a process, there's symbolism. It's still going on now. People yeah, are indoctrinated every year. It's so true. Well, speaking of running it, speaking of, you know, being on campus, um, I remember when I first went to college, I had no fucking idea what an e-board was. And I only sort of learned about it through my roommate. Did you actually follow like campus rules and guidelines for being a club or was it just sort of to the wind? Because now I'll tell you, the, the, the Survivor Maryland girlies are organized on Instagram now. You've got head of challenges, head of twists, like they have every role ironed out to a T better than I would say some job postings on LinkedIn. Certainly. What were you doing at the time? Okay. So you got to imagine that Austin leaving is like the stock market crash of 1929. And I am FDR trying to rebuild. All right. I am trying to get us out of this great depression. So Austin didn't have a lot in the first place. It was really Austin. He did it all. But also, when Austin did it, it was people on his floor that he could film anyways because they lived down the hall. Um, Like, it was all his friends. It was all very simple. It was 2013-era filming. Like, it was just – and this is not an insult. It's a gorgeous, wonderful season. Well, gorgeous. It's a very fun season. It looks like garbage because it's garbage quality from 2013. Um, Phones and technology have evolved so much, truly. But – when I started doing it, I had no one to help me, basically. Like, I'd have some people show up, but not a dedicated crew. For the most part, just me filming and maybe one or two others. Maybe for some challenges. For tribals, it was usually just me. Um, but not like a dedicated group. So I was every aspect of it. And I had to be because if I don't do it, it won't exist. So I was just trying to trudge through. All right, I was wearing my potato sack. I was in my plastic bag shoes, um, just trying to survive and keep this alive and whatever, whatever. Um, and eventually I tried to do an e-board, but ultimately it was like, I was sort of volunteering people what to do. Like you are going to be ahead of this. And then they didn't do it. So I would do it anyways. Like it's hard when you don't really have the structure to make all this happen. And in terms of you know, the legality or whatever, or how really, how recognized was it? Um, I'll tell you this, the people who needed to know knew, all right, the resident directors and people who would okay or not allow us to be around on campus. Like the people who needed to know said, you can do it. If you want to be outside this residence hall in the dark with your torches, yelling on this picnic bench, you're allowed to, we will let you do it. Uh, when we would do challenges, wherever the cops wouldn't, wouldn't stop us they'd sometimes watch uh and enjoy the show (laughs) like how recognized were we enough that it was never an issue for me obviously after i left and we had several more hosts they started trying to get it a little bit more organized they started trying to get these things like a a campus contract and all that really ratified um and now they do have a full e-board now they have all these planning things and they have a survivor prom or they have other events All right. And I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. They have that. I didn't have that. I made the club exist. All right. There wasn't time for me to do watch alongs because you know what I was doing? I was scheduling a confessional. I did everything. And let me tell you, I do not think that is the way to do it. All right. I was spending nearly 10 hours a week per round. Actually, let's not, if, if there were multiple rounds a week, 10 hours per round, having people come to my room so I could give them questions so I could get the confessionals so I could edit it later. I was the one scheduling everything, all of the tribals, all of the challenges. I was the one making sure I got all the footage, which, you know, I got as much as I could. I was the one who had to buy all the supplies and prepare all the challenges and do all of these things. And it was exhausting. Like Survivor was a part-time job, basically. When I wasn't in class, I was doing Survivor. Um, which is a joke now because like whenever I see a friend from college uh, and they go, so, you know, Sir Iron Maryland, they go, yeah, I know about your thing. Cause that's all you would ever talk about. But like now I think it's great. I think as much as I can hoity toity, wow, look how much work I had to do. It was hell. Uh, that whole process was not fun. Mm. It's fun to look back on in some ways, but like 
it sucks to be the only one responsible for everything because when something uh, messes up and it will, it's all on you and there's no one else to like work with to try and find a solution. It's just up to you to find another solution. So to have an e-board, to have people you can rely on, to have people who will work on these aspects, to have these fail safes, it's so nice because it makes the yeah. production cleaner. It makes it more fun. It gives everyone more time to enjoy themselves. I would say that I got to enjoy college, but a lot of it was working to make Survivor Maryland happen. And I loved it, but certainly I could have been doing other things. Um, I don't regret a single moment, but yeah, college was was Survivor for me. And I would have loved the luxury. I think there's downsides to an e-board as well. More cooks in the kitchen means more disagreements, more fights, more drama yeah. in production. And uh, baby, there was very little drama in production for me because uh, I wasn't looking in the mirror and arguing with myself. <laughs> At least not not normally, not when I took my meds. You know that that gif of the person fighting with somebody on like an empty bus seat. That that felt, yes felt yes. Like <laughs> Um, yeah, that was me discussing, all right, so we're doing a swap next, right? No, no, no. I think it's actually, no, but I mean, Let it play uh, out. the only time I really had any sort of board was when we were doing casting. Um, and that's yeah. because when you're casting, it's hard to always be impartial. And sometimes when you interview people, they do things that annoy you and turn you off of them. And you're like, I don't want to ever cast them. And you need someone to say they're good. You need to cast them. Um, and that happened a couple of times. Mm. Casting needs multiple people, multiple eyes, because there's so much more that goes into uh, someone being able to play a game than simply they pissed me off during an interview or insulted <laughs> me. Or I found well, them boring. Cast casting is on my list of questions, so let's, let's uh, explore, shall we? Because casting... Did I get your e-board question? <laughs> you did, you did. Okay, great. It was wonderful. Um, e-board is such a funny word. I think I thought it was electronic for a long time. I didn't it's understand that, that it was short for executive board. It's weird that you don't just say exec board. Um, yeah. Or just the executives of the club or like the board of the club. Like e-board made me think it was like online, like a um, blackboard. Right. Um, I mean, I do think that it's great. They have all of it. I do think it's very funny to like have all these rules and whatever. I mean, I... I applaud every college survivor that does it. I think having like social media specific chairs is great just for even the most basic of like publicly talking about it or like posting these fun moments just to advertise it to everyone and their friends. I think having mental health is such a good thing to have in these games. Yeah. Really, I was a wild west of a production. <laughs> um, it When you're running, I, it literally is going into the great depression. Like it was whatever works works. Um, that's why you have great moments. Like why are these people about to break up their friendship? Uh, this is not that deep, but you know, I was not trying to get involved in that because I was too busy doing everything else. I didn't have time <laughs> to sit down with people and be like, Hey, what is going on? I had them come to my room so I could go. All right. So tell me exactly what happened. How are you feeling? Do you think you're going to vote them out? <laughs> My job was yeah, to get so, content, no, not to help them. Drunk fight you have. Explain it to me bit by bit, please. So you fought with this person. Are they your worst enemy in the world and why? No, <laughs> say it again. Um, so can you rephrase it as a question, please? Uh, rephrase sorry, question can you, you preface answer? it? I need to know what you're talking about. Um, all right, yes. So casting. Okay, casting. Uh, something that I have always been curious about is how are you looking at the who knows each other portion of the cast because it's very hard. I mean, I was just rewatching a bit of season six and people are like, Oh yeah, we live in the same building. And they're like, Oh my God. Like, you know, people just are, are everywhere around campus. And I'm curious firstly, cause I have a lot of other questions too. So don't, don't worry. We'll get to them. Like, how are you looking at the idea of who knows each other when playing college survivor and, and the connection somebody has when they're a potential casting applicant? You know, what makes College Survivor, again, different from other survivors is that on this college campus, Survivor, or Survivor the University of Maryland College Park has about 30,000 or more undergraduate students. Yeah. That's a lot. But good, yeah, you right. then have to remember, not all of them live on campus. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of them are commuters. 
Uh, not everyone in that 30,000 is the same age or, you know, fresh out of high school. Some come back later after working in the military or after working in real careers. Um, so they may not be interested in doing like clubs on campus. Um, you are trying to find people on this campus who want to play this game and it's hard to let everyone know. So you're trying to reach out through word of mouth, through Facebook groups, through Instagram, through whatever you can, but it's not an easy process. And ultimately what you're left with is a lot of people will hear about it. They'll apply. They'll tell their friends, their friends will apply. So it's mm -hmm. just naturally going to happen that friend groups or people who know each other will apply. I mean, again, this is a game. This is a game where you want to compete against each other. You're a fan of this show. You're probably going to know similar people. You're probably going to fit within similar frameworks. That just sort of happens. Um, we try our best not to put friend groups in entirely together or put them on the same tribe or whatever. But I think it's going to be impossible to filter out every single connection. I mean, yeah. in the upcoming season I'm about to do, people have connections or relationships. They don't tell you in the interview process. We always ask them, how did you hear about this? Who have you played? Who have you heard that is? Who do you know who has played this? Like, we try our best not to have all people who know each other. What clubs are you in? But yeah. they don't know that the person they're in class with and they worked on a group project with is also applying to this. They don't know someone they lived with last year on the same floor as is applying those connections just come up if we're talking about a certain situation in season seven um i think I'll you know th that situation exists but i do think there are uh, other examples of that all over sure. College survivor, survivor michigan survivor. has plenty yeah. of that um survivor maryland mm -hmm. seasons two and three are literally everyone knows each other um yeah. i mean ultimately it's like you try to get as much information as you can heading into it, but what they don't tell you, you don't know, and they don't know until they're there. And I think what makes College Survivor very difficult is when you know someone, you have two choices. You either automatically trust and work with them, or you work against them because you know each other. Mm -hmm. Neither is necessarily the right move. If you just try to work with them, sometimes you guys will disagree on what you want to do. And that can cause strife in your real friendship because, oh, I want to win this game, but I want to vote out your friend. And that's the best move for me, but you really mm -hmm. don't want me to. So now you're mad at me for doing that. Whereas if they had just been a normal person, you would have just done what you wanted <laughs> to do for your game. Same as been normal. If you'd been a normal person, you would have gotten rid of that person. You would have gotten rid of person X. Whereas on the opposite, you know this person, you want to get rid of them automatically. You are cutting off an entire uh road of friendship mm. alliance whatever because you already don't want to work with someone you know i think as much as there's a benefit to having someone you know in the game there's just as much of a threat because now you know each other what do you do with that information with college yeah. survivor it's inevitable you'll see people or know people in the game you can try to mitigate it all you want but i think it, it, it happens. And I think that's also a beauty of College Survivor, right? Is that these aren't complete strangers. They do have these relationships. And sometimes it's funny when it's like, I actually hooked up with this person and they ghosted me and now I want them <laughs> out. Um, or like, yeah, we were in a group project. They didn't do anything. I'm pissed off about it. Or it's like, oh man, wait, we're on the same floor. We should work together. Like, there are elements that are fun about it. There's elements that are not fun. Uh, and I think it really just depends on the situation. But I have no issue with people knowing each other. That's what makes it college survivor. You're at college. <laughs> what do you I think, think is so I think it's so fun when it gets like revealed. Like, wait a minute. They're roommates? Uh oh. It's like it's just funny. It's just funny to be like, well, you gotta get rid of this person. They have a roommate in the game. Ooh, okay. Yeah. He's, he's seen him in his me. underwear. <laughs> like I, the college roommates, you forget how vulnerable you are with a college roommate. Like you're just like, yeah, sorry, I got to change in front of you right now. I'm sorry that you're doing your homework, but excuse me. Like, oh, yeah, certainly fine. that. Um, I never lived I mean? solo. Oh, I mean, I did. I started becoming an RA so I could live on campus for free and continue to host um, and also potentially get people to play. 
none of my residents ever played my seasons, but they did play seasons after I left. Um, okay, there so. you go. I mean, that's the, how awesome the, not all of his inception. No, I know, I know. Like it's it's it. Also, I think there's something about an RA that you inherently trust when you're on campus, where you feel like this person wants me to make friends. This person wants me to to fit in. And so I'll do what they want me to do. And then it's like, yeah, can you fight against these, you know, 18 other people <laughs> for a hundred dollars? For fun. Great. Um I mean, you know, I loved being an RA. It was great to to help freshmen out um while also torturing other freshmen through my my made up little game. Um but yeah, I mean I was I was a leader on campus now. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there is that element of, I think that's why Austin got so many people is because, like, they knew of him, they trusted him, and, like, it was cool. It's cool to do something on your floor like that. I don't, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I cannot imagine that made the floor a better place to be. Um, I don't think Survivor is a game that builds community the same way you'd want an RA no. to do. <laughs> You just like have the board of everybody's names and then when someone gets voted out, you're just ripping it off the board. <laughs> you rip it off their door and go, you're actually not allowed to live here. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, that'd be funny if it was like a housing, a game for housing lottery. That'd be, I think. Oh, don't give them ideas. They might. <laughs> I, I want to, I want, I want you to walk me through the actual casting process. Like when were you putting applications out? Were you wrapping up a season and then saying, okay, new applications? Were you casting while a season was going on concurrently? What's the, you know, what's the time frame? What are you looking for? Who's joining the team? All that good stuff. Oh, I'm having war flashbacks. All right. Yeah, sorry. So basically, it was for me. I don't know how they do it now. Um, I know it's shocking, but me, I'm not involved with the casting process as much anymore. Um, I've decided, I think it's, probably not the place for me to be like yeah this person seems boring bye um so my process was during the season around late merge probably in the spring it was around like late march uh or mid-march and then the fall it would be around like october late october mm -hmm. i'd start putting out these applications posting it everywhere just trying, I basically spend like a month trying to start casting. Uh, the idea was you put everything out, you get applications back, you'd set up interviews. You'd have these interviews, film them, post them on a unlisted channel and send it to cast it, like your casting group who yeah, group. make those interviews. And then you'd all take notes about these people, rank them, and we'd have a discussion, usually right after exams um and we'd cast and then we'd send out uh you know the acceptances and we'd see who said yes and who said no and then we'd go to our alternates um yeah. and then we sent out rejections when we once we had a cast i'll say this there was not a single time that the people we initially cast were the people who all played that season yeah there was always someone who dropped out last minute or uh never responded and we had to replace and uh you know that happens i think especially in college when you sometimes sign up for things that you don't intend to really keep up with we've all done it we've all signed up to a club shown up and then been like no nah, i'm good i actually don't care uh so yeah i mean that's happened uh yeah but that's what casting is like i i've literally had scenarios where the morning of someone drops out and you have to find yeah. a replacement I literally texted a resident and was like, you should play Survivor right now. Come on down. You're in. Um, <laughs> Price is right in. style. is Just freaking out as they come hopping down the stairs. That'd be fun. It's just, it's so, uh, yeah, the whole casting process took a while and it's like, you interview these people, you try to get a little bit of a sense of their personality. I think the most important thing in casting, especially college Survivor, people really want to get hung up on how good of a player are they going to be? The truth is probably not good. Uh, this yeah. is going to be their first time ever trying this. They're going to make a lot of mistakes. They may not even know the show, but a good personality is a good personality. And uh, that can't be taught. So you got to find the people who are interesting, who are electric, who are going to be fun and hope they play well. I mean, if you are a survivor Maryland fan and you've got a favorite player, 
they might not be your favorite player because they are good at the game necessarily. I mean, Chris LeCompte famously knew nothing about Survivor, and uh, now he's a huge fan, but he learned about it by playing. Uh, Katie on didn't watch the show before playing it. Uh, people like Faluke, Victoria, Chris Thomas, they're personalities who learn to play the game, but I wouldn't ever say we're like the biggest super fans and like that's why they're well liked. A good personality will win people over way more than a good player will. So in casting, it was always like, can they tell a story? Can they be fun? Are they interesting? Um, and the big answer is no. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, it, you know, you were trying to find a lot of interesting people who are different, different majors, diverse, um, different years. Just uh, you wanted to find a, a mixed group of people so that there was stuff to interact with so there was conflict in some ways you're not trying to cast so it's like oh you don't want to do that early big brother stuff of i hope there's no one super religious there and then you cut to i'm bringing my bible with me like not that kind of conflict but you want someone who's like i'm a theater major and an uh an engineering major just so it's like yeah they have weirder class schedules or one might be more dramatic than the other this is a senior, so they're just focused on like getting a job. And a freshman who literally doesn't know where the dining halls are. You tell them you live in this <laughs> hall, and they go, "Where's that?" Like you want that. So that's what the casting process was like. It's all about dichotomies. It's all about creating like these people are aren't gonna you know fist fight each other, but they're gonna be in direct contrast in a lot of ways, and that's what makes. I mean, I think so much about you know, not to, not to harp on, but how Survivor Maryland All-Stars literally starts with, like, Ashley and Siona fighting at, like, a boba tea shop. And you're like, you don't get that anywhere else. You don't get just, like, petty drama turns into, like, genuine gameplay in some ways. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, it sometimes is the most petty drama. It is, like, you were really annoying at this party or you were drunk and I didn't like that. Or you flirted with my boyfriend or, uh, I don't know. You were, you spread a rumor about me in our fraternity or sorority, like just weird, small things that just happen in everyday life that now become more important because of the game. And certainly when you have history with these people, what makes all stars very fun is that these people have played together and have a history and they come back together and continue those histories exactly the same going. <laughs> I hated you before. I hate you again. I don't like you. Leave me alone. Um, I think that is the beauty of like college survivor. You are on the, all on the same campus. You interact with them. Maybe you have a bad experience. You think I'll never see them again. And you're forced to see them again. And you go, I hate you. I do not want to spend time with you, but I have to. And like, yeah, you, you will hate these people that you don't really know, but you will see them all the time because you're all in the same place. Yeah. So, I mean, this brings me to sort of the larger question that I'm so fascinated by. I only have these experiences of like very short-term games or short-term experiences. What is it like planning a season that is going to take like 70 plus days? How are you introducing that concept to players saying, hey, you're going to need to be dedicated to this possibly for 70 days. I'm going to need you to be here. I'm going to need this X, Y, and Z from you, confessionals, et cetera. How do you prep somebody for that? And then how do you plan out your own game in accordance to the schedule you have? So, you know, when people sign up to these games, you say it runs all semester long. No one really takes to heart what does that mean until they've played. All right. <laughs> the idea of something lasting a full semester, you're like, sure, that's so much time. The reality is it is 16 weeks less like it's 16 weeks or less. It is not that much time. Um, so you start off and you're like, OK, guys, like maybe once a week we'll have a challenge in a tribal like so much time. And then you start to realize I have 20 kids that I need to whittle down to three or two before <laughs> exam week. And people get busy. They've got yeah. sorority or fraternity functions. They've got birthdays or events they go home for. They've got breaks. They've got exams and tests and whatnot they've got to study for. So for them, it's very much in the beginning, very lackadaisical, whatever. Like maybe we'll talk a little bit. Um, from my end, it's like, all right, guys, just remember, we're going to schedule times for professional and we're going to 
uh, I need you guys to film all of this stuff and just send it to me. It should be easy. And then for me on my end, I go, all right, guys, send me your entire calendars as much as you can. And I'm going to tell you when Challenge and Tribal is. And the more people we whittle down, it'll be easier. So on my end, it's like, let's go, 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 go. The more people mm -hmm. I can get rid of quicker, the better. Because by the time spring break rolls around in the spring semester, I want to be almost to merge. I want to be at merge. And then I want to be comfortably done before exam week. I don't want to have to deal with any of that. It's very hard. It is such a difficult balancing act of basically asking people to prioritize Survivor Maryland about almost above everything else, but yeah. also not being so like, this is the most serious thing. But it's hard. If you have ever scheduled anything, any event, a birthday, oh, yeah. a party, just a trip with people, you know, a D&D &D group, you know, <laughs> scheduling is the most frustrating thing in the world to do because some people won't be responsive. Some no. people will give vague answers. Some people will forget and not prioritize these things. And yeah. it's your job to figure it out. Um, there's nothing that annoys me more than someone who will give a vague answer that then requires a follow up. They go, I'm not, I'm only free on Thursday. When on Thursday? Okay. Are you free the whole day or just for an hour? What, what is the cutoff? What is the Let's start? Let's get into the details. Yeah, Literally, right. that was the, that was one of the hardest parts of scheduling. And same with confessionals. Cause I basically had to sacrifice. I had to be the most flexible. It was, when are you free? Oh, Thursday night. Cool. So my night needs to be with you now. Great. I am free. What about eight o'clock? No. What about nine o'clock? So for me, I'm sort of like a Swiss cheese person when I was working with Survivor Maryland because I had to block out pieces of time for yeah. everyone else to get it done. And whatever was left, whatever wasn't a whole, I was the cheese. So then I could say like, now I should be doing my homework or now I need to go see a friend or get food or whatever. Um, or I can relax or sleep or whatever. I just said, or whatever, twice. You get the idea, all right? Um, but for these people, it's very much, I need to schedule as much as I can, as quick as I can. The sooner, the better. Lock it down. Get serious. Um, so scheduling is hell for 90 days. Um, it's very hard. It goes by much quicker than you think. And uh, you just, by the time of my fifth season, I had gotten oh, it down, certainly, but... It's not easy and it's stressful. And sometimes people complain, oh, we're doing so much. The worst thing that happens because of college, I think if you were to do a live game or whatever, and it's like a weekend or a week long or whatever, it's like that's easy enough to carve out time for. 90 days is yeah. not that many. And for games like these where you want things to simmer or for people to have time to strategize, it sucks when you go, there's a day between these things. Like figure yeah. it out. Um, but we always did. And that's what makes Survivor, College Survivor so interesting, too, is hmm. these people are living their lives. All right. This game is going on. They are going to classes. They are studying for tests. They are going home to visit family. They are seeing their friends. They are just living a college life and playing this game on top of it. So whenever you watch real, sorry, whenever you watch CBS Survivor, um, <laughs> your question of why isn't this person playing well it's like, yeah, why aren't they? This is all they're doing with their time. When you're watching College Survivor, why isn't this person doing well? Because they're probably studying. They're probably busy. <laughs> like, they've got a hundred other things to do. So These people want to be like doctors and lawyers. Do not forget. Yes. Some of these people are doing very hard degrees, and it takes so much time. Think of how much time you've had to spend in college studying for your little tests and exams. Imagine also having to talk to... 10 other people about who to vote for and they're all lying to you. It's not easy. And that's what makes it fun is that you're stressed out all the time. So then you get angry when that time is wasted or when you're blindsided or whatever. Um, yeah. So yeah, there is a, there is an added element of being a college student on top of all of this. And it's exhausting. Just to even think about going back and like, I have to study for this exam, but I also need to do four confessionals today. Um, what what was a confessional filming like? Because first of all, I uh, is it on? Because I have a, a other questions about like 
the camera work and we're going to get into it. But what is filming a confessional like when somebody comes to your room and you have to walk them through, you know, I just had tribal council. What's my experience? Okay. So here's how it works. This is the same camera I used. Wow. It's <laughs> lasted forever. Logitech makes a good camera. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I, and I did get paid to say that by the way, this is an Logitech, ad. Sponsor me. Sponsor Hashtag me. Logitech sponsor. Um, so here's how it worked is I would bring, they would come to my room. I lived in it. Oh, okay. My season six, I lived in a, uh, a double. So I had a roommate. So <laughs> sometimes my roommate would come in and I'd be filming someone. Uh, they'd sit in a chair and I'd have my laptop opposite them. I'd film and I would be asking questions that came to mind. The, the standard ones of like, so X just got voted out. How do you feel about it? Like what mm -hmm. parts did you play in it? How does this affect your game? And then I'd ask, who have you talked to? What were those conversations like? How did that change your perspective of this person? Um, what are you thinking for this vote? Why are you thinking this? What does that do for your game? And like sort of just keep trying to get ideas of what they wanted, why they wanted it, and really just anything I thought might be relevant. Following yeah. up on something from the previous week or going, who do you think has the idol? Or are you worried about an idol? When they would say their plan, I wanted to know, like, are they worried about themselves? Um, do they think they can trust these people? Sometimes it was because I knew they couldn't. Sometimes it's just to say it to keep up that guise. Um, I always had players who, after the fact, were like, I knew you were telling me this. It's like, no, you know now, but you didn't at the time because <laughs> I asked 100 questions. Um, and yeah. I would say for me, what was I doing? Um, I had to do so many of these confessionals. The only way I could focus is like, I would be saying, I could listen to them. I would be like looking up at them, trying to connect that way. But also if I would be fully like on my phone, just like trying to keep track of things, make sure everything was up to date. And sometimes just watching like those Instagram uh, videos of just paint mixing or like the nail the, polish videos. I love nail polish videos. About like cooking college. or any of that, just things to make me not lose my mind. Cause you can only <laughs> ask oh, the winning tribe about how good it feels to win this challenge before you're like, I don't care. Yeah, um, what was your strategy in steal the bacon? Was so, it steal the bacon? So you just got, you guys just won your first challenge. How does that feel? Yeah. Who do you think did well? And who do you think did poorly? Um, and I, you know, the confessionals get easier the more you do them, but at first it's hard to know exactly what you need. And then you start to realize, Oh, I actually don't care what your strategy was during the challenge. Cause like, we're not going to hear that. Yeah. I actually don't need to know about, this conversation because it's not relevant to anything else you're doing. Um, but at the end of the day, confessionals and interviews are so much longer than they will ever need to be, but they just have to in case. Yeah, you never know what might be relevant. It also helps sort of media train, quote unquote, your players. Like the more they speak in front of the camera, I think the more they get used to it and then the better the confessionals will be. And you feel bad as like a producer sometimes being like, ah, this is going straight in the trash, but I'm glad you're getting prep from it. And I would say it's also helpful for you to know how to interview someone without mm -hmm. coming off like as uninterested or coming off as fa uh, like favoring anyone. And like, yeah, it's, I would say it's not easy to interview someone. It's not easy to interview someone, certainly yeah. not in a game sense where you're trying to be this impartial person, but support them. You don't want to come off as like, yeah, that's that's a terrible idea. Like, don't do that. Or that's the best idea in the world. Like, you're going to win, blah, blah, blah. You just want to support what they're doing and get the information out from them. Um, and you also want to ask the questions that are going to be needed without it coming off as suspicious. You want to ask, <laughs> what happens if you can't trust this person? But you should trust them. Like, do you trust them? Yes or no. Don't take my question. I'm just curious from your perspective. So it was always a balancing act, but for the most part, I felt pretty confident that I could ask them anything and it wasn't going to affect what they were going to do, um, yeah. even when I wanted it. Uh, you know, I think the beauty of, of these games is, although I wasn't held by any sort of law that I couldn't influence things because it wasn't a real reality show and like, yeah, there's money, but like it was $100 you know, the, the chips fall where they may and you can you can really get an idea of what they want to do and why they want to do it. And uh, that's just what it is. It's it's harrowing to be like, I love this person and I hate that you're about to blindside them. But I want to know, like, why? What is it? Do you trust the people you're going to be working with, et cetera, et cetera?
Mm. Um, but you're impartial. Even though I ran this game, I cast all these people, I knew everything that was going on, I couldn't affect what was going to occur because that ruins the game. Even in the moments that I was like, I fucking hate this person. I hate this is what's going to happen. Why isn't anyone targeting these roommates? I bring it up every <laughs> week and no one cares. That's just it. Like, you want those people to be steadfast in what they are going to do and you want to hear why. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, you know, I w- we should maybe make the live reality game of the oath of I'm not going to, it's like our, you know, I solemnly swear that I will not change the outcome of this game whatsoever. It is really hard in a lot of ways to get people to express themselves in a way that you know survivor fans are going to enjoy and also will make sense for an audience especially for you i don't know how much you were thinking about this were you thinking about the edit quote unquote and and the final product because you're coming in having seen austin make a couple episodes right what two seasons maybe like nothing nothing like what all stars becomes and you're being essentially thrown into the saying great make a new season you have no idea how the edit will form. Oh no, what was my, qu- I don't know, you heard my, you your question fuck. was basically how do you ask these questions? Is it with an edit in mind without that experience? And you're so answer, right, Anders. <laughs> I, again, this is what I would do. I would listen to people. And even if I'm not like fully paying attention, I listen enough to know where, know what the point is. Um, Years and years of this experience, Naomi, of people <laughs> sort of saying an idea of me going, can you repeat it with a full idea? Um, the answer is uh, it's trial and error. Uh, I now know extensively what I'm looking for and what I want them to say. Um, and sometimes I would feed them how I want them to say it for, for the most part for better and worse. They would say it how they say it, and I have to work against that. Um, no, I mean, when you would ask, them, when I'd ask them questions, it's like you just want to get an answer. You want to get something that is understandable and is concise. And not every answer is going to be, as you've gotten from this interview thus far. Sometimes they're long winded and they go on forever, even though we got the point in the first two sentences. So I didn't have a full edit in mind, but I have a story sense to me, and I knew yeah. I want this. I know you're trying to do this, I know what's happening against you. I want to get that fight um, and then hope I can make something out of this. And for the most mm. part, yes, sometimes. And this is a problem with college survivor versus CBS or any sort of real production in that way. The time between filming and releasing is so great that you have what you have and you have to make it work. Even if you wish you had more or you could get it redone so sometimes you won't get the bite you need or the right yeah. quote said, and you just have to make it work. Um, that's what it is. I don't have the the team of engineers to make something sound normal, even though it is the most Franken bite bullshit you've ever heard. Um, and sometimes they don't say what I need them to say. So it's like, all right, sorry, that's what it is. Like it's a, you kind of have to make a jump from A to C, but it's a crapshoot. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. If I go back now, I know exactly how I'd ask questions yeah. to get what I want, but it's not a normal way to talk. When you talk to someone, you're saying real conversations, you're going a while, you go off track. There's a funny story to this, blah, blah, blah. When you're doing it for a show, I want to go, Naomi, how did you feel about what Eric said to you? And you would say, I want you to say, Eric really hurt me with what he said. I don't know if I can trust him. That's it. That's all I want. But you're going to say a hundred other things. So <laughs> now I would know. I would listen Eric to you and then I'd go, great. Can you just say this? <laughs> that's why, and and not to go into a diatribe, that's why now, see, literally what I just said people do. That's why now when people complain in real reality shows, it's like, uh, production feeds them these lines. It's like, yeah, so that we can get to the point quicker. Yeah, this listen. is what they meant, and we said it for them. Or we – let me rephrase. That is what they are saying, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Yeah. It's true. You know, I think what people forget is either you need to have the patience of, oh, hey, I'm Naomi. I'm a sophomore, and I um, I think I'm going to be a – like you either need the patience for the, the lengthy answer 
maybe the ums and uhs that come in between the people losing their train of thought or Naomi, can you just say that you're going to be a theater major again? Sure. Like it, sometimes it gets a little bit sn like snippy and fast and you know, it's TV. Sorry. Like that. If, if if anybody is uh, thinking about this more, just watch The Curse on Showtime because that's exactly what it feels like to watch a director. Can you say that again, but um, happier and less sad? Great. Do it again. Uh, okay. I have a lot of questions about moving on to the edit in the camera sense. You've got the iconic laptop camera that is in my notes, literally just iconic laptop cam. Um, you got a phone. What else are you shooting on? Anything oh, else? Just phones, baby. Just a lot of phones. That's what makes it hard. It's decentralized phones. So it's all on okay. everyone else's phone drives and you have to like get it from them. And sometimes they don't record everything or they don't send it to you or they delete it or whatever. That is the hardest part. It's all filmed on these little things and you need to collect that from everyone and people who are lazy or takes a while to do uh so you miss things and it never gets sent to you and it's just forever in a black void of non-existing literally this week i got footage for the season i'm working on right now um i know it's shocking that it's been several years to get this footage i looked at it i'll use some of it but i made it work without it like it's and I thank this person very much for sending it to me finally. But you have to understand how, how to get all of this. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, that's what makes it so different from a real show is that this is a bunch of college kids filming things. So sometimes they do really poor angles. They're in the shot. They don't know anything about lighting or where to be for the challenges. And that goes for me. Um, if I was doing it again, I'd know how to direct better, but I didn't. And uh, that's what it is. Yeah, I don't want to like make you feel bad, but you did break the 180 rule and steal the bacon. Oh no! Oh. And you know what else? I don't care. Um, couldn't care. I, I, I will say that that there is a joy in seeing the camera people in the shot when the camera people are players from other seasons. That is like the one sort of like thing you get away with. I think in in LRGs and College Survivor, where it's like, oh look, there's Crystal Compt holding a little camera. It it's cute. I mean, like. You just have a lot of people. They're just filming. Yeah. Like, and it's so funny to watch scenes and be like, wow, you film this yourself and you're not even in the shot. Like literally they'll be like this. They'll be like, yeah, can you believe that happened? Like so crazy. <laughs> Sorry, for audio listeners, just so you understand, I am, there is only a fourth of my face in the frame right now. And I want you to imagine that I've set up the camera. Can you imagine why you would set up the camera where you're not in the shot? But you're I supposed can't. to be filming yourself? You are filming yourself talking to someone else, and you didn't find a way to frame both of you in it? Uh, that's oh, insane. That. But they do it. They just don't think about that. And uh, that's the beauty of it, too. It's amateur. None of this is professional, but it's fun. It gives you that same joy that you would get on a, on a simpler scale. Like what so getting footage from players i feel like is must be even more difficult than getting footage from the crew i know that like i've seen like the insane rules <laughs> that survive impossible. yeah survivor michigan has like those insane rules of like it's got to be on your dropbox or like it doesn't count whatever how are you acquiring footage from players and how how are you teaching them to film themselves i think that's a whole other fascinating element of like the game are you showing them Survivor Maryland season two, three being like, okay, here's what we're trying to do. So make sure you film yourself. How are you giving them the tools to create the show for you? Oh God. You think you can make a college student do anything? Um, <laughs> you think you can make anyone do anything just by sending them a video link? Absolutely not. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. So here's how it works. All right. I didn't have no Dropbox. I didn't have any, they had, Google drives that they would send to me and they would upload things. I would tell them, all right, I've downloaded everything. You can delete it and add new stuff. Or they'd come over and I just download it onto my, onto my Mac. Um, yeah. It was rudimentary. It was flawed. And, uh, you know, you try your best. You get on people's asses to send you stuff to film. You remind them to film everything and they just won't. Like the fact of the matter is if you're in the moment you're with someone and you start getting mad, are you going to pull out your phone to start yelling at this person? Or are you going to just fight and be done with it and talk about it later? 
You're not going to film it. Like, unless you're already filming with someone and then you start fighting, you're not going to start filming something in the heat of the moment. Um, so some footage, like the, 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 you talked about in All Stars, the fight at the boba shop. Yeah. No one was filming because why would they? They're just getting boba really quick. They didn't know a fight was going to happen. And they're not going to be like, world star, and pro- pull out the phone just to watch two people yell at each other. Like, that's just not going to happen. So you tell everyone, basically, here's what it boils down to. There's two versions of College Survivor. There's the version that exists, that you play. Um, at the end of the day, you could film nothing that occurs. All right? Yeah. People get their feelings hurt. People win. People lose. And then there's the version that will exist online. Photos, videos. The less footage or captures you take, the less of that exists for your own pleasure or your own protection, whatever. So what I always say is that uh, the more you put into this game, the more you'll get out. And if you want to be more involved in this show, more of a character, you need to have your footage uploaded. Otherwise, you don't exist. You know, mm. you exist physically, but you're not a story character because you're not there. That's why when people got mad about Survivor Maryland major conflict, where it's like, wow, we really only see one perspective. There was only one perspective shot. Like, I don't know what to tell you. When two people aren't filming themselves having any conversations, I can't show them having conversations. Yeah. Um, so it reminds me a little bit of I remember people were saying, like, where is all the jackson and megan content in michigan uh, what they're dating and it's like yeah i i want to film it like i wouldn't want to film that shit if i'm dating and being like oh a bunch of weirdos on the internet are gonna watch this later let's get the camera out like it just i think it goes against uh you know we all were raised on that beautiful 2012 era of youtube where everybody was vlogging every second of their life but we're normal we're well adjusted we're not british or living in la I think, well, some of us are now, but, um, (laughs) hey, keep L.A. out of your mouth, New York. Um, More like New Dork. Uh, Anyways. Okay. More like New Dork pity, because I pity (laughs) you as a dork who's new. Uh, Thank you, guys. That's all my time. Uh, Tip your waitresses, not waiters. They don't deserve your money. Okay. Try the fish. Uh, Back to the story at hand. Uh. What was this? What were you talking about? <laughs> Literally, oh, 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 yes. Uh, right, right. The show. The so show. You're, we're back. Cut all of that out. Um, Cut. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you're with someone, like you're hanging out with your friend at your apartment or your significant other or what have you, pulling out a phone seems so performative. Like, all right, we're just hanging out, but now we need to perform strategy. Um, yeah, I'll now perform and, strategy. Uh, so I that I think that's why in those moments you won't see a lot of that. Because it's like, if they're your roommate, you really have to go out of your way to be like, let's film something right now. And I think that takes a special kind of person to be like, we should do that. So for the most part, yeah, in Sarai, Michigan, you've had a couple of relationships. We don't see a lot of that footage because you're just going to pull it out on a date? Like, why? That's yeah. weird. That's weird. That's unusual. It it takes almost, it makes your relationship feel, I think what part of what is necessary in College Survivor is having an authentic relationship with whoever, with with your uh, ally, with the person you're playing the game with. And sometimes when you're having a good conversation to say, okay, now let's film it, makes it less authentic you can see the early days where people are like oh i guess we're filming whatever and then the authenticity builds but if you're just in the middle of the moment being like okay that was great we should be filming this right now i think it loses something and that's why a lot of times like these these moments that are after challenges or whatever we have crew at least there to jump in and help and i will say like when i have crew there it's great because they can film things but when it is me it's like i have to just jump into it like hope i can get what i need um but yeah, it's it's hard to always be in those moments. So that's why with College Survivors, you do have a lot of missing moments because it is a performance to decide, let's start strategizing now. Um, and you don't have people dedicated just to following everyone around and seeing, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Because again, this is 90 days. These people are living their lives. Mm-hmm. You can't film them all 90 days unless you live in a house 
that has cameras everywhere constructed specifically to film these people all 90 days. We'll be right back. Yeah, I mean, that that's what it is. You can't film everything. They're not going to film everything. They're going to film when it feels like they're going to talk strategy. Yeah. So those moments, those those really nice moments between people, they're not going to film. Why would they? Live your life. You've seen those people who, like, live stream everything. They're on Twitch just live streaming their lives. Weird, creepy. I don't yeah, want to live in your weird surveillance state. Yeah, I, I have – I guess I want to talk more about directing the show, right? Because – I feel like what people don't remember it there's been this narrative change I think especially it came from Michigan All-Stars where it was like oh the editor is telling the story the editor is crafting this and I think it like Ian just got like a lot of attention I think because he was somehow the face of Michigan All-Stars in a weird way which is hilarious uh, considering he's like not a part of that season and at, at, at that point had not played editor. at all yeah considering he's just the editor and a guy with a camera the idea that the person who is editing is directing is not normally the case. Very, very rarely is an, a director editing the final product. And it's only because, A, we're probably the people who are going to get this to happen to make it, to finish it and put it out there. So for you, would you, I guess I'm so fascinated by the idea of like, if somebody sends you a video, are you watching it? Are you seeing what's happening? And then at the next challenge, are you thinking, oh, I need to film these two people because they're fighting? Like, are you absorbing the story as it's happening and then influencing your filming decisions? So I don't, I didn't watch every piece of footage I would get because I'd hear what they were going to say anyways in confessional mm. and then would adjust based on that. But no, they'll send hours of footage and it's like, I have to live my life too and do other things. Like I can't just be watching you do yours because you'll tell me about it anyways. Like mm -hmm. I'll at least see like, okay, you were with this person. We're going to talk about that. Uh, I mean, here's what I'll say. What you watch is not necessarily what happened. What you watch is an explanation of what happened. So mm -hmm. the real game did not take, you know, the 16 one-hour increments you're fed. It took hundreds of hours, 90 days. What you're fed and given is the story of what happens. You're shown these people, but reflections of them. You're shown the moves and why. Not the most detailed versions, but the explanation needed. Um, you're not shown every facet and every decision. You're shown the ones that ultimately matter. So editors do play an important part in telling a story, but specifically the story of why someone wins and why these mm -hmm. people lose. So I do think it's important when crafting a narrative, when directing to identify what stories are happening, what moments are important, even if they're not important to the grand scheme of things, what leads into all of it. You know, when person A wins at the end, a part of you is going in your head, why did they win? And you've got to think about, I remember in this moment, person B did this really cool thing, but that doesn't feed into why person A wins. So you've got to juggle how important is that moment that I like? Is it important enough to exist at all in this narrative or does it feel like it'll detract? And I think not to get into a Michigan discourse here on All-Stars, <laughs> uh, I mean, that series was infamously very long. Uh, every episode was over an hour, an hour and a half each one. And it was because there was a very specific narrative being told a lot about these relationships and the complexity within all of it and why it feeds into each other. It wasn't that very typical survivor A to B, why this person wins. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think that's just, that is, the direct, the editor is a director in some ways. You're telling a specific story. So for me, my story is focused very much on the why does this person win? Why does this person lose? How do we mm -hmm. build that up? For instance, for Survivor Maryland, winner take all, which is the upcoming season. Um, we have not even really plugged. We have <laughs> I'll say it. I'll add a note. But we have, the season is coming out very soon. That's why oh, we're we'll doing talk this about episode. it. Yeah, it's coming out February 12th. So in 10 days, um, or sorry, for whoever listens to this, February 12th, Monday, uh, 2024. It comes out every Monday, um, <laughs> as far as we know. Uh, but for this season, like as I'm going through it, I'm very much thinking, 
how does each episode bleed into another and what is sort of the idea being grown here? What is being expressed? What are the important storylines? And in my mind, I've already started to categorize it as like, all right, well, each episode is in a way standalone, but it is also into a greater arc, which goes into the full story. Like I would argue working on it right now, it comes in three episode arcs that build certain mm -hmm. story ideas that grow on each other until we finally get the reveal or the crescendo, the climax. Um, so when you're directing, you're very much just trying to get as much as you can so the editor can get the clearer story. And being both means that I have all the information and I have to just whittle it down, which is why yeah. over the years people have suggested, why don't you get an editor? And the answer is because the editor doesn't know the story and I do. Directing and editing, I know better than anyone what the story is and what yeah. the story is I'm trying to tell, which might not necessarily be the story that others want it to be, but it's the story that's being told, which is the same with, I got a lot of criticism in Survivor Maryland season seven, a uh, major conflict for the story. People didn't find it as thrilling of a strategic story uh, as other seasons, which is fair. I don't think ultimately what the story of that season is, is about strategy. It is right. about what I would argue a trio of the good, the bad, and not the ugly. And I would say, honestly, probably the funny uh, in an ironic sense, the comedian. Um, but like you have the hero and the villain who are so tight, tightly put together, but their yeah. arcs are not the same. One is the loyal ally who is honest and true to his word has been from the beginning. And that's why people respect him. And then someone who's willing to betray everyone and everything except for his closest ally, but did in the end and lost because of it. I, I mean, I, I think that for me personally, I find people are so quick to forget that not every season of survivor is good or is this perfect season where, you know, like, what's his face comes in and just fucking stormed, you know, like, like it's not all game bots and like blind sides, right? There are ups, there are downs, there are very human stories and there are very like emotion driven based stories. I love survivor Nicaragua and I love a season like survivor Gabon where it goes off the rails in a way that you don't think is like gameplay survivor, but is still the qualities of survivor that we want as viewers which is human beings being forced to operate under this game confinements making choices that they normally wouldn't have to make or are at direct odds with how they feel about how they should operate in the world and whether they allow themselves to make those choices with no consequences or whether they make the choices and feel bad about them yeah i liked season seven I thought that it was uh, entertaining. Certainly, I you you know where it's going to go, but at the same time, you're like, it can't possibly be going this way, can it? And then it just keeps going down the hill in a fun, in like a way that is so fascinating. Um, I, I love rewatching College Forever. I can't recommend. I watch. Um, I love Taskmaster, and I rewatch Taskmaster a lot because you know what the funny, you know what they're going to do, but it's all about the moments that are sort of very small and in between that somebody who's watched the clips. 10 times sees and throws in for you to watch the second time around the third time around i think it's just as important um which brings me to a question that i wrote down can you see a winner like weeks out can you like you have the whole game board in front of you can you see where things are going are were you ever surprised in season six or seven by something happening like you're 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 so omnipotent in in this version of the game does anything ever catch you by surprise? Do you know how things are going to end up? Oh, my God. I mean, for the most part, you see things coming because they build up and it's understood. Sometimes you don't know because the players come up with it. Like in the final six of Major Conflict, I did not know that was going to happen because all the confessionals led me to believe it would be a simple vote. But they literally met that night after never talking and were like, Let's do something insane. So I'm just going through the motions of a normal tribal council. Um, and in fact, I even forgot to record the tribal council. We had to redo it entirely, not the voting, like just the tribal council questioning itself. Um, and then I go to re like, I go to order the votes 
and I see what I see. And I, I was literally shaking with excitement. I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And then when I go up there to read the votes, I'm like, he could play an idol. He could not. He doesn't. And I'm literally like standing there like, holy shit, it's about to happen. So even I can get surprised by it. And what happened truly that night was just like, I, there's no way I could have seen that coming. It was out of nowhere. It was infuriating in like an exciting way that it finally occurred. And also like, I was, I was shocked. I couldn't believe this had happened to me. Um, but in terms of like who I could see winning, I mean, some people are very obviously good at the game and having a great story and have great perspectives, but it's so hard to say a few weeks in who's going to win. Mm. Once you get to like the final seven or final six, you have an idea of who's likely to win, but there's always those doomsday scenarios. Even in all stars, I remember Austin, like, some weeks would be like, oh, my God, if this happens, like, I don't know what's going to be the finals. Like, I don't know how I'm going to edit this, blah, 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 blah. You can have it, a hit on your hands. Not, and not, I'm sure he's talking about this. Like, there was fear. OK, if Chris Thomas goes and the final two is Ashley and Eric King, is it going to be an exciting final two? <laughs> it would because just because of their shared history, but not in the way of Survivor fans. You know what I mean? Like, it would be exciting, but not because they're good at Survivor. Right. Um, I think that was the... <laughs> not to shit on their games. I'm sure they'll be listening and care I, some I have a lot of but... respect for Ashley's game and rewatch. I think I watched again, and I was like, you know what? Ashley did a lot with not a lot that she had. Nobody would listen to that poor girl sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it is very obvious who, who would win if they got to the end, but I think that's the beauty of Survivor is some people have much more subtle game moves and when they're able to fully explain it you can see the genius and the beauty behind it and like hey i can be surprised at tribal councils when plans change and i can be surprised when someone does better at a final tribal or does end up winning and i think that was the case for season seven like the winner is not someone that i pegged as winning initially like i was like i don't know if they did too much i was on the same train of this person The Dane Uh, train. I was on the Dane train. No, but I thought like, okay, Doug clearly is like the best player here. He's run everything. And then upon rewatch, knowing the results, I can evaluate. Yeah, no wonder this guy wins. Like he is playing really well. He's just not playing the Doug game. And I think it's hard when you're so survivor pilled. All you think is strategic mastermind, strategic mastermind. (laughs) You forget there's so much more to this game than just being smart at strategy. And like, here's the votes. It's how do you make people like you? Cause we have seen, and we will see it forever. If someone's annoying and unlikable, they won't win. You're not going to let a annoying person win. I don't care about bitter juries or whatever. If someone isn't likable, they don't win. Yeah. What about the jury? Are you checking in on the jury? Like, are you talking to them, talking to jury members after they've been voted out, getting their opinions? Are you are you trying to read the room, basically, um, when you get to the end game? I mean, I, run, I I have their their Ponderosa chat, so I see what they're yeah. saying. And, like, I'll talk to them a little bit after tribals or whatever. Um, but, like, not really. I kind of just let them live their lives and tell them, hey, don't interact with the players. Like, let them show what they're going to show at tribal. It's always funny when like a juror is someone's roommate and they're still in the game. And it's like, I know you're going to live with them, but just like try not to talk about the game. And, you know, it's like, take your job seriously, but also don't, don't let them try and influence you outside of the game. I don't know. Not too much with the jurors. They just become students again that I asked to show up (laughs) to tribals. Do you, um, do you ever see, I'm sure you see storylines as they're forming. Do you ever like, do you have some favorite like visual metaphors that you can find in the edits? Like, are you, I'm sure you go through a process of rediscovery when you're editing the season. Are there like story arcs that have happened in previous seasons that you see and think are so funny uh, when you're editing them? Like, I think for example, uh, you can, the start of 
season six where Tony basically puts what will essentially become the final two on the weak and worst tribe, I think is so funny in retrospect. Um, I'm just in wondering retrospect, if any... sure. I mean, like... You don't know it at the time, but when no. I guess when you're editing. When you're editing, you will see certain things happen. And, like, I'm someone who likes to make little charts and graphs and whatnot. And so that's fun to do and be like, what's a trait? Like, for instance, there's one player whose entire existence could be removed and will not affect a single, like... Oh, yeah, the, was, the survivor player of no consequence. Classic. Yeah, like... That happens, and it's very interesting to see upon reflection, like, wow, kind of impressive. Um, but uh, for the most part, I don't know about meta- like visual metaphors or anything, but it's very funny to like see, oh, it's weird the, the final three are all grouped up in this shot, or like, that, yeah. that's cool. But I would say for the most part, it's very like of the moment, funny to see when editing, but it's not a huge thing. Very rarely does that happen. Um, it's not on my mind. Mm. I'm much more of like, here's the true fact, and here's what I'm seeing, and here's the storyline that is existing. Mm. Here's a story Here. about three amazing bros who... <laughs> who did it. Con- they defied the odds it? and won equally. Can you, can you think of times, um, maybe perhaps in the invention of Bay Squad, or maybe in the, uh, in other times where you look at your players and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And are you trying to make a mockery of my television program? <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about Bay Squad? God damn it. Okay. okay. No, we don't Listen. have to. But it just, again, I watched this episode and the way that they validate why they named it that is even more insane than I remember. They're friends and it's the Chesapeake Bay and they're a squad. But they wanted to spell it a little funky for Survivor. Insane. Deranged insane. Oh, I, look. I We were so hung up on the idea that you have to make it Survivor-y. You have to make it sound uh, like a... <laughs> like a Fijian word or like any sort of <laughs> island nation's language. Um, so sometimes they were cool, like Pascala, because they are the stem tribe and uh, they're using a triangle. Um, and then sometimes you get ferocity and base squad. Ferocity is just a word and base squad is an abomination. Although <laughs> you look back and Austin's work, in his second season, they were just the regular tribe names from Australia. And then uh, for All-Stars, it was the orcs in Lord <laughs> of the Rings, the Urukai. Can I tell you, I, okay, I, again, I was, re- I, that hit me, just, it finally hit me that that is what, and also I think it comes from Lecomte or something. And you're like, you fucking nerds, like, it, uh, Boys cannot escape the like. Boys are go to Jupiter to get more stupider after they name their tribe after the orcs in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, it's dumb. It's so <laughs> dumb. I mean, the the tribes this season. I mean, it's gonna the the tribes this season are Sababa and um, Majesta. Hmm. Uh, I I can tell you the reasons now if you want. Um, sure, you know, I can always take it. Sababa, so I believe, is, uh, I believe, okay, it is a Palestine, no, it's an Arabian word um, for something. I think it's just an Arabian word they took um, that they like. They like the name Sababa. And then Majesta is because they were purple. So like majesty, majesta. I I think they're fine. You know what? I'll accept those. Base squad was so heinous; it truly really ruined my life. Ferocity yeah, isn't you, good either. I don't know why that. No, was ferocity fine. is hilarious because it's a bastardization of fidelity, which I think Swally pitches because of like the Marines or something. Oh like, yes, yeah. I'm like ferocity is a word. What do you mean? And yes, yes, yes. They call it that because Swally has an idea and doesn't really communicate it well and so they go what about just the word ferocity and then their tribe ends up being one of the least threatening least competent (laughs) tribes ever i mean i couldn't have imagined a better start to me running survivor than i allow them to build the tribes 
and they build the worst tribe to have ever existed. Um, lost four times in a row. Uh, there was nothing they could do to make it any better. And even after they swap, it's like some people go to almost every single tribal. It's insane. And they're not bad players. They're just on bad teams. Right. Can I can I also say I love the Survivor Maryland wiki because everybody's uh, subtitle will just most of the time be their major. And then it'll just say like Eric King's brother. Like <laughs> one of them is just plays Call of Duty. Browns fan. Like I like that people sort of committed to what you were presenting and said, this is this is the Lord's truth and we're not going with anything else. Sometimes I would ask them and then I started being like, what's funny for me like this season one of them is very tall and one of them is could beat you up um just because like yeah you can put their majors but like that gets boring um Mm. that's true yeah and it's less serious you know these are college students they don't have jobs so for the most part it's just like whatever like their major or something that's interesting um, do you believe in Survivor, College Survivor Edgic? Do you believe in the idea that you yes. are telling a story, CP3, whatever? Like, what's your feelings on College Survivor Edgic? Um, you're asking me about College Survivor Edging? Ew! Uh, <laughs> my thoughts oh, on That's going to get me put on a list. Yeah, cut that, cut that. Um, cut. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe in Edgic. I think that for those who don't know, Edgic is editing logic. It is that I, I don't know your audience. I don't know if they know everything. Yeah. Don't make a face. Um, mm-hmm. just so you know, listeners, Naomi just did something so heinous and awful. Uh, <laughs> and she's holding up a sign right now that oh, says, this, my this listeners the, are stupid. This is the part of the podcast where you get me canceled. I, I, I was like, when are we going to get to it? Uh, so editing logic is looking at how things are edited, what is included, and evaluating how complex does this make this character uh, and how much are they shown? And how does Mm -hmm. that fit into who will win? Because the winner will often be someone who gets to say their perspective and will be presented positively. I believe in editing logic. I think there has to be a rhyme or reason as to why you're presenting certain ideas. If you have a choice to present anyone's confessional anyone's perspective there has to be a reason why you choose person a or person b this is an alliance of four but why do i show this person showing the decision there's a reason of I, I, now, I also just inherently believe in the idea that well first of all I don't, I don't think what people understand about reality tv is that like a lot of the time things are transcribed like there's paper cuts before they even go to the footage they're editing the just the words so it's very important to tell the narrative this season based on the words that people are saying and so you know a d win survivor 45 they say okay well let's give d a confessional here where d looks smart and in charge like i i fully believe in the idea of edgic as as like is this baked into the show yeah absolutely i think it's funnier when it comes to edgic in a game where you're not filming everything or you only have so much control over the content that you're receiving right. to be putting out there. I think there's a little bit more leeway and certainly you can't show everything all the time. That's why sometimes the winners come out of nowhere because there's just no footage, but I try my best to present ideas. I also think that in our world now with edgic and these ideas of how things are edited being so understood there has to be that element of it is more complicated than just who is the most positive and perfect and most complex person shown. And you have to look deeper into what is going on and who is presenting themselves in the winning way. Like, can someone be presented negatively and still be the winner and get a winner's edit? Yeah, I think that's been shown on Real Survivor or CBS Survivor. Yeah. And can be shown now. Can someone who's a little more under the radar, a little quieter, or doesn't have the most correct perspective win yes i think that there is all sorts of new complexity added to it but when i edit specifically for me i do think about that and i do think Mm. i want to hear what this person is thinking because it does ultimately matter and then sometimes i'm like all right i don't know if the winner needs to say anything here because like we've already heard so much this episode from them like let's let someone else talk you try to be fair but you also want to keep people who are interesting and will matter later 
Absolutely. The, you know, the narrators are the the narrators are the narrators, no matter what. That's so mm. deep and true. Oh my god. Um, put me in charge of post production. Make me head of post production for Survivor Maryland twenty eight or whatever they have coming up. Twenty two. Um, god, that's like. At a certain point, they're going to outpace reg- regular Survivor. I can't wait. You know, like two uh, there are two seasons a semester or two seasons a year. Let's go. Like, let's get it out of here. Okay. Um. Anyways, do you have any health concerns when it comes to running a game like Steal the Bacon? <laughs> Are you afraid of people getting hurt when you do these challenges? Oh, um, obviously I don't want that. They do sign a waiver. We've never had a huge issue, but like, look, <laughs> we try our best to just sort of set up precautions, explain in these physical challenges, how to contact each other. Like if you're running at each other, don't go head first. Like, <laughs> and there's only so much you can do before people just, make the mistakes um am i worried about it yes uh you know what happened we haven't had any serious injuries yet and uh it happens uh yeah you only yes you only slightly get accused of hazing is that's the only real downside okay you know everyone (laughs) wants to say it's hazing but here's the thing hazing is something bad to get into the group what if the group right. is just doing bad things to yourself? <laughs> is that hazing or is what that if what you're you already of? in the group? Then it's fine. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You get hazed to join like a group or a frat. But what if you're in the frat automatically and you just have to do these things because that's what the frat is? Like, you don't sign up for Survivor <laughs> so you cannot do the challenges. Yeah, like, you're getting hazed to get out of the the frat or club. Like it's, the hate happens and then you might leave. That's what you sign up for, to be fair. <laughs> like that's what you sign up for. And it's not hazing. No, it's not. Period. And uh, that's all I have to say. Um, <laughs> oh my God. That article is hilarious too. Cause it, it almost feels like, you know, is your team texting? Learn what these abbreviations mean to well, keep your kids so- safe. I mean, that article was annoying because it, sorry. So there was an article written about how college survivor is like hazing and inappropriate and whatnot. And it's like, Oh my God, no one's ever made this claim in any of these clubs in any of the years that we've run it. So why are you a stranger trying to put on a label of something that you do not have experience with or interact with? Is it because you feel this way? Keep it to yourself just because we have the internet and you have the ability to say something doesn't mean you need to insert your opinion onto everything. I mean, you can. I think it's wrong and dumb, and it's just not true. It's apples and oranges. And, like, yep. no one has to do any of these challenges. They don't have to. They choose to. All right? And we try our best to avoid injury, but the injury isn't the point. We're not saying injure yourselves. We're saying pull this bike tire across the field for a point. We're not yeah. tying and- 40s to your hand and making you drink. like. Yeah, this is although you know Edward Forty Heads would be a good survivor challenge. I'm yeah, just if everyone saying. could legally drink, sure. Yeah, of course, of course. Also, although that, that, that's we're on the oh. point of let's let's get on the point of hazing really quick. I'll make this point. You really want to point the finger at college survivor? Why aren't you pointing more of a finger at the Greek life community? Huh? How many kids have died doing college survivor? Mm, mm. That's what oh, I thought. Emotionally, a couple, but physically, none. All right. All right. <laughs> you can see the moment his heart breaks. What's that Simpsons line? I, I. <laughs> oh, All right. Next question. No, completely agree. Greek life overrated. Uh, not monitored closely enough, given way too much money. Anyways. Uh, okay. How are you keeping all of your footage? I want to know about like the storage. Are you keeping it all on a drive? I know you're editing in Premiere. What are you doing in post to like keep everything fucking organized? Are you doing a folder structure and like name what's going on? How are you keeping this together? Okay. So I have multiple external hard drives, two terabytes um, because it's 90 days. You never know how much footage, but a lot. Mm. So I basically organize it in a way of, Whenever I do a confessional, I'll put the name and then the round it's from. For each round, I will put 
the dates it is, so from April 27th to April 31st, I will have all the footage for the challenge in one folder, all the confessionals in one folder, all of the strategizing in one folder, and then one, all of the tribal council in one folder. Um, I try my best to keep everything segmented, but obviously sometimes things are more about the next round or the previous round, and you kind of have to mix and match depending on what you do or don't have. How do I organize it? The best I can. Sometimes it is sort of a clusterfuck and things are where they end up. But editing for me is a difficult process. And let me just get into it. So when you talk about reality TV in general, you've got big teams of people. You've got people on the simplest levels of transcribers and loggers, people who look at the footage, document what's in it, sometimes exactly what is said by who in this footage so that an editor can look back into it and pull what they need. Uh, I am both of those roles in this, except I'm not going to transcribe everything because I don't have that much free time. But what I do instead is, after I put them in the right folder, I'll go through every confessional, I'll cut out all the times I speak, and I'll mark every time a new thought is brought up or if a really important line is said. Yeah. So that later when I'm going through an episode, I will look at the specific round go through and just search for something that I need. And by search, I mean manually watch through parts to find the exact phrase I might want yep. to be looking for. I edit uh, on, a, on a reality show team. You've got multiple producers and editors working on different segments and refining them. So the, the pre-challenge, the challenge, uh, post-challenge, tribal, all of that. You've got different people working on it cutting down all of these parts. For me, my process is I know what footage is what. I see that we have uh, Bobby talking to Leonard and uh, Sheila talking to Gabby. Uh, I'm just saying the names. Uh, we have a, a meeting of jam. Uh, this Queens. So you, you have all this footage and then I'll say, okay, Let's bring it in and watch through and cut out the parts that seem interesting. What are the interesting parts from these conversations? I will then have basically a big project filled with snippets of conversation. I will grab confessionals that seem to match with those conversations that give more to the story. And then I will go through and actually form it into a cohesive story, cutting out yeah. over half of it. Then I will go back through all of this footage that I have put into a project. And I will cut even more to make it a clear story. And I'll find new confessionals to fill in what I actually need. And then I'll go through again and cut out more. And then I'll put music and cut out more. The whole process is basically like any sort of, like an artist breaking a piece of marble into a statue. Although on a lesser scale, getting a big box of macaroni and making macaroni <laughs> art. I'm slowly taking this large object and making it into something resembling what I want. So I have my paper and yeah. my glue and my box of macaroni, and I'm slowly forming into my macaroni horse. Uh, and sometimes I have to grab multiple pieces of macaroni, and I don't use all of them. Uh, I didn't want to compare me making College Survivor to marble. I was enjoying it. To being a, a Renaissance artist like Michelangelo, I, I was enjoying that metaphor. Yeah, I would say it is more like macaroni art. Um, <laughs> so that's what I do is it really is just whittling down these things into their quickest, most succinct, easily understood pieces. Because if there's yeah. one thing I know to be true is just a little bit of complexity makes it almost impossible to follow. <laughs> Sometimes you just want it to be clear and simple. You watch a show. You want to understand why. You don't really need all those details because once you add them in, it's a little too confusing. And I don't mean that as an insult to people's intelligence. It's just if you're watching something that goes for 50 minutes, you just want to understand it. You don't need to. I'm not making Oscar worthy films. I'm not making things to be digested and dissected in every aspect. Oh, I, I logged Survivor Maryland on Letterboxd recently. Just kidding. And what'd you give it? <laughs> uh, four stars. Wow. Are you kidding me? This interview's over. Cut the cameras. <laughs> Another sort of just general question I have is like, 
what Survivor music is triggering to you now at this point? Because I think that all Survivor editors reach a point where Survivor music is inherently um, burned into your brain. And then you hear it and you go like, ah, I remember this. Um, for me right now, it's the Winners at War intro. Um, not not Under the whole introduction of them all getting up the boats, that one is particularly triggering to me. What about you, Anders? Or the one where they sing? No, not that you better be ready, but it's like... You it's, better it's, be ready. <laughs> I can't believe they haven't brought back like, give us a little bit of theme song to each season there's no yeah, theme one. it's just the 40s drop the except four, for that 45 is all about birds apparently like if you're gonna which is weird because the, the bird cage was in 44 they just what are they doing um no i i'm curious if any music in particular is is like a, a lightning bolt to your brain sometimes unfortunately no uh wow. i haven't reached that level um nope the answer is no uh, I will say what's always annoying is that having watched so much of it, you're like, this is the music I want. Why can't I find it? Why? <laughs> what? What's annoying is that. Sorry, I dropped something. Cut, cut, cut. Am I going to have to cut that? <laughs> yeah. When I go down and pause what I'm saying. Yeah, I'd like it. You just cut that. Sorry. Right, you let's just waste put, people's time. Can we do another take? Can we do another take? Sorry. Can we just restart? Um, hi, I'm Anders Norberg. I'm the current editor of Stryer, Maryland, winner take all, the new season coming February 12th, 2024. Thank you for allowing me to introduce that at the top of the show. Um, <laughs> I'm going to splice this in right now. I, I'm going to splice it in the beginning. So they've heard it. There we go. Great. Done. Um, so what the fuck were we talking about? Uh, <laughs> music. We're talking about music. No, uh, I would say for the most part, it's just like you hear music in the show and you're like, oh, that'd be good for this moment. And just trying to find like music that'll work for the moment. I think for me, I have less of a connection to the Survivor music than other people. Like Austin was very particular about it, which is very funny because when I would send him like early cuts, he'd be like, why are you using this music here? It's like because I thought it sounded fine here. I didn't realize you had a connection to it because so-and-so got voted out with it or it was used in this moment like i'm much less precious about it than other people are so it just it doesn't affect me the same way i will say i i use mostly survivor music like i don't use really contemporary music in the show because i don't know feels weird so it's always funny when like i do hear it in other college survivors like they just use popular songs and it's like Oh, okay. Interesting choice. Like you're going with more litigious music. (laughs) Yeah. Litigious music or like, uh, I'm always fascinated by copy. I get copyright stricken by fucking survivor songs all the time. I remember on on Instagram, there was a a point where I couldn't post the opening titles to survivor New York because the opening titles would get copyright struck. And this was like right when Reels was starting. So I was like, what the fuck? This like this is the wild, wild west. And I'm getting yelled at for putting it like the survivor theme song on Instagram. Which so is then so you have to go find this terrible it's music. Like, is the survivor theme song that profitable of a, a a song that you can't allow others just to post with it? Like, what are you talking about? Who's who's blasting that on Spotify that you're losing their money from? Russ Landau is shaking his fist at me. Curious. Look, I I know what I do is not particular. I mean, it's parody basically, but I know what I I'm not making money off this. It's very funny when it's like you're using this song that he made. It's like, yeah, uh, for a fake survivor uh, on a college campus, like for no money for fun. Yeah. Guys, really... no copyright infringement intended. It was not, not... intended. Well, look, if correct. someone really wanted to come down with a hammer on Survivor Maryland, it's like. Yeah, sure. We use your property, but like, we don't make money off of it. We're yeah. college students. We watch your show. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, just you know, for anybody out there, just listen. If no copyright infringement intended doesn't doesn't stop you from infringing on a copyright, you don't oh, need certainly. to put it in your stuff. If, if you go to a store and you say, "I don't intend," you know, "I'm stealing," but I don't intend to steal. Look, you can, I know stealing. I'm stealing, but I don't intend any harm. Okay, but you're <laughs> okay. doing it. Sure, you're free to go. Look, I'm just saying, 
uh, obviously support the original creators. We do. We're also not really taking whatever. I I don't need yeah. to. No, no, no. We're, we're, out, you're you're absolutely right. Everything you've said is right. It just you know I I, I want to give a it's shout funny out to all the people for you on to YouTube rem- there for trying. It's funny for you not to be able to use the Survivor theme when people will use full songs like with people who tour. Uh, full Disney music, yeah, exactly. Like Dis- yeah. It's like, Where what is it? I'm sorry. Does Ross Landau make so much money off of this music that it's like, it has to be cherished and saved? <sighs> no, I uh, know it's all to Ross Landau. Very talented, great at what he does, love his music, but what's up? But is there anything else from Survivor Maryland do you think people maybe don't know or don't know the full behind the scenes of? Um, God. Uh,. <laughs> I mean, they just don't get it, man. Let's see. Uh, what don't they get? Um, no, I mean, I think that College Survivor is such a cool thing that exists. I'm so happy it does. All the people I've met through it are such interesting people, and it's created such cool communities across this country. Uh, I would say that I love people who love these shows and are really passionate about it and want to talk about it. I also think on some level – there are moments where it goes a little far. Uh, I look far be it from me to criticize people for getting too angry uh, about <laughs> people they don't know playing an online fake show. But sometimes you see the the rabid critique of every aspect, and you just have to go. This isn't a fully funded project with dozens and hundreds of people on the crew setting everything up planning everything having footage of all aspects editing it having all the refinement these are for the most part very small teams of college students doing this for free in their free time sometimes after they graduate and the product isn't always perfect in fact i would go so far as to say it's never perfect but i would say it's impressive all the same uh it shouldn't be free from critique. I just think sometimes people are so harsh on it to the level of like, look, I think if you want to criticize the multi-million dollar production of CBS Survivor for all of its mistakes, go ahead. Yeah. The amount of levels they have to go through to get any of that done or aired or whatever that they go through for casting and producing all of it. Critique makes sense for Survivor Michigan, Survivor Maryland, Survivor OSU, whatever. Leniency is probably the better approach. And also, yeah. it's fine to be critical of the players. Like, sometimes they are caricatures. Let's leave the death threats out of it. Um, leave it at home. Let's leave it. I And I'm going to hot take on this. I don't think anyone on reality TV deserves death threats. Um, wow. I know, kind of crazy, but I'm feeling a little insane right now. You don't think um, one of the 400-something people on the Squid Game Challenge maybe deserved one death threat? Hmm, no, <laughs> I don't think they do. I I don't think that if you don't like someone on Survivor, you should tweet at them and go, I hated you, um, and yeah. you're a bad person for playing it. I Or if they betray someone, because that's crazy. But yeah. look, I'm just saying... For the most part, unlike those people, the college students who played this are much older now, living their lives. Don't hit them up and be like, you were bad in this thing you did eight years ago. Like, Mm -hmm. they've moved on. Uh, Let me walk this back, actually. Okay, look. I love people loving these shows. I don't think we need to be super harsh against the people who are on it. Um, Yeah. They're doing it for fun. It should just be fun. Uh. An unintended consequence of being the director and editor is I saw someone make the same claim multiple times. And I thought it was funny because it's something that she did do. And then people really went, so she hates women, huh? She wants to work with men and she hates women and she wants them dead. It's like, well, and she's and she's this and that. She's ugly. She should die. Blah, blah. It's like, all right, guys, this is a funny hee hee ha ha thing because it, it's she does end up voting out women but like she's not a woman hater she's not some rabid horrible person yeah it's i mean 
part of I think Survivor College Survivor is being an immature 19, 20, 21 year old. Like if I pointed a camera at you for 90 days when you were 20 years old, do you think you would stand by everything that you said or did? I mean, I'm and if you, you can right say now. yes, congratulations, you're 22. <laughs> Got their ass. I mean, I'll tell you, watching myself, I get to edit out my worst parts. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. And I and I do. And like, look, I've been critical of Survivor players before, uh, of college Survivor players. Um, I also do it in the sense that, like, I'm just saying it dramatically on an after show, not texting them or interacting with them in any capacity afterwards. Um, and like, I, I don't care to know them in real life. I'm just saying on the show, I found them grating or annoying or whatever. And that's fine. You can be annoyed by someone. Go ahead. Let's just not get into the yeah. insulting them physically or whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I say the, all that to say, I think Survivor Maryland, winner take all, season eight, coming <laughs> February 12th, 2024, is going to be an incredible season with yeah. a lot of fun moments, twists, fights, drama. There are going to be characters you're going to love. There's going to be characters you hate. I know that for certain. And I, I'm fine with big reactions. Let's just make sure we do not go too far with it because these people didn't ask to be judged online for who they are. They didn't, you know, they're playing a game. Part of this yeah. game is voting people out, clicking up, doing all of that. And I want all of that. I want you to go, this person's the biggest villain in the world. Like, I do want them to lose or I can't believe they did this. I just don't want that level of, I think they're a garbage human being who should die. Like, mm. there is a difference. It's so true. Um, I think it's fine yeah, to say they're, they're, a, they're being awful in this show and they don't like the way they're treating other people. Like, fair. But yeah. do not tweet at them. <laughs> Don't, yeah, leave them alone on Instagram slash Discord slash the internet. If you want to more. at me and say how much you hate uh, this person, that's fine. I mean, I'm, it out. that's fine. Uh, if you want to post in the YouTube comment who you love, that's great. I, I'm going to tell you for me personally, I think we do these like little uh, after show surveys of like who your favorite is or whatever. I think I'm going to remove the question who's your least favorite because I don't know what the point of that is. I'll say who's your favorite villain, not who's your least favorite. Because yeah. guess what? No one wants to be your least favorite anything. Your your no favorite villain? Results. Uh, look, yeah. favorite villain, great title. Am least I? favorite person, not great. So mm. in the same way that reality shows have started to move away from let's just be mean to people or really critical of that and more on to, oh, sob story or like the the like, I guess more saccharine, like sweet or whatever. I think I'm going to shift more towards like, let's just view them as villains and less as a terrible person. Mm. I think it's great. I think that is a totally, uh, people love to, you know, people love to hate characters, but they're characters. Certainly. They're still characters. That, that's just how it is. They're not, they're, they're not real life. And they're also like adults who are, again, because this is so long ago that it is, Almost 10 years. Not quite, but almost. All right. Let's chill out. To be clear, this season was filmed in the spring of 2017. Okay. So seven years. Sure. If we're going to put a time on it. Um, these people didn't think about COVID. They didn't think about, uh, they didn't think about the current world we live in. They lived in immediate post-Trump America. Um, mm -hmm. We're all college students, all right? It's, it's a simpler time in that way. It's 2017, all right? Living our lives. It's not 10 years. It's only go seven. Get, go get your dip brow and go log on to Instagram and post a filtered pic of you and your friends. Leave us alone. We use Snapchat. We sometimes use Facebook. And we use Instagram. We didn't have TikTok yet. It yeah. was death of vine. and Musical.ly. Almost almost no one was using musically but yeah it's yeah. musically there's no cully okay sorry yeah, I'm old. old old <laughs> uh but yeah Anders, I mean, let's 
I just want to hear some things you're excited for for season eight because I'm super fucking excited. First of all, great title, winner takes it all, great name. What are you no, looking just for? Winner take all. Um, winner take all. I'm just it's not the Abba song, but it's close. Um, what am I excited for? So I mean, for those of you who don't know anything about it, this is our eighth season. Um, what season are we on now? Don't uh, stop asking me questions. Stop asking. Uh, this is a season where we have eight returning players from previous seasons who all want to come back and win. So people very driven to play as well as 12 new players all here for the first time, trying it out this season. We are, they are split into two tribes of 10, four returners on each six newbies. So the game cannot be played stagnantly. Like you have to play hard. If you want to win this season is filled with excitement. The twist is at every challenge, there will be game changers which is something that was not influenced by the show, but did have the game changers did come out during that season. So uh, there are advantages at every challenge to give people the opportunity to try out things, take risks, play hard because you only got one shot. And uh, mm-hmm. if you want to win, you have to take it all. Am I right? Yeah. So it is a great season with a lot of fun characters and moments. Uh, one of the one of my favorite seasons I ever did. One of my favorites to ever edit. Uh, I love it. I think it's going to be so fun. I'm sure it's going to be divisive in certain ways. But I'll tell you what. If you were worried because Survivor Maryland Major Conflict was just not strategically uh, as active, or you found that Survivor Maryland New Beginnings just didn't have enough conflict for you, this has strategy. This has conflict. There is stuff going on all the time if you have right. someone that you love that's returning like sherry or katie on from survivor maryland guts and glory uh, hello shout out to the eric eric and mike madonna fan I club would, over I that's would, me yeah or fans of major conflict losers like eric yang or mike madonna or morgan or doug or even the new beginnings folks of faith and dylan like they're coming in they are the same characters you know and love but older and better um there's just going to be stuff that's going on like it is a fun season and i'm really excited for people to watch it and there will be after shows so if you've enjoyed listening to me for this long congrats you'll listen to me again but in shorter time increments i think uh no promises on how much shorter but (laughs) certainly there will be after shows it's going to be a great season it starts soon um and yeah I can't wait. I know people have been clamoring for more content. And if you've been sitting around going, "Mm, I miss the old Survivor, congrats. We're going to show you something that isn't the old Survivor, but isn't the new era Survivor if you hate it. This isn't 26 days and it's not in Fiji, so maybe you'll love it. Um, And yeah, I'm just so excited to be doing it. Uh, I think I've grown so much as an editor and also in my age that this is just going to be an even better season than the rest. And yeah, I'm excited for everyone to watch it and love it. And if you hate it, don't ever say anything. Don't talk to me. Um, But yeah, and I have to say, I think my Mike White was robbed. I don't know if that's a, that's a hot take here. Wow. That's beautiful. I don't know why you'd say that, but it's a really beautiful take. And I think it it feels very inspired, you know? Mm -hmm um now th- and thanks thanks for everything i feel like you know in the pandemic we got to have so much fun talking about major conflict and i felt like it was one of my favorite pastimes when i you know wasn't doing much of anything it was always something i looked forward to and i uh know how much work and time you put into this which is why you'll never hear me saying when's when's the season coming out it'll come out when it comes out i believe you know and it's coming out for better or for worse it is coming, coming out <laughs> Anders, what is the social media going when they want to watch? Obviously, they've just finished this video and they're saying, I need to watch. I need it. Feed me, feed me. Yes, yes. All right, little piggies. Let me tell you where you can get your Survivor Marin slop. Um, so you can follow us. Uh, all right. Sorry. Let me pull up exactly what everything is so that I get it right. Because uh, look, like I said, we didn't start it up knowing it'd be a social media thing. Um, all right. So if you want to follow us on YouTube and watch all these amazing episodes, uh, you're going to follow us at Survivor Maryland Gen 2, uh, where we've got such an incredible 
array of videos. You can watch our previous two seasons, New Beginnings and Major Conflict. Or if you want to watch the original five seasons, you can go to Just Survivor Maryland, uh, where you can watch the first five seasons. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow us on Instagram, we're Survivor.Maryland. Uh, and if you want to follow us at Twitter, I believe we're UMD Survivor. Um, <laughs> and if you want to follow us on LinkedIn, why? We, why would you do that? We don't have it. Um, and if you want to follow us on Facebook, it's Survivor Maryland. I don't know what you use. Oh. We don't have a TikTok page, I don't think, but that's not where I'm going to be posting things, so don't no, follow that. No. Um, anyways, yeah, YouTube, Survivor Maryland Gen 2, February 12th. It's coming out. Follow us on Instagram at survivor.maryland. Yes. That was correct. That was correct. Twitter at UMD Survivor. <laughs> we'll post everything. You'll see it come up. Watch, watch, watch. Love, love, love. Send us money. I'm kidding. Don't. But leave a comment, subscribe, all these things. Like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, sign up now and you could be on the next season. <laughs> <laughs> right apply to apply to survivor god isn't it terrifying to think that there's probably people out there at this point who have applied to maryland to play survivor maryland like that's nuts it's funny that that could be happening it's even funnier the idea that people uh have no idea it exists and are on that campus and more people who aren't on that campus know it exists it's just funny again i didn't even find out about it because i went to the school i found out about it because someone you were on a website for orgies it. yeah for orgies yep <laughs> favorite website um well naomi thank you so much for having me let's get out of here thank you everybody for listening check the description for lots of links to see what's going on thank you to my little brother xander for making uh my intro outro music you're you're a wonderful brother and i only had to pay 40 dollars for it um and thank you everybody who has been following along on twitter or youtube um if you're listening on audio, there are YouTube versions of these podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, I have audio only versions of these podcasts. It's like I'm really organized and good at uploading footage and video and stuff. Uh, please check out uh, not only Survivor Maryland, but uh, Survivor New York. Um, my other episodes that I've done, they've been fantastic so far. And I had a great time talking to BB Barfbag about all his amazing videos. I'm also on Twitter at Naomi Calhoun. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching Production Value. Please leave uh, a comment or tell me what you think of the five-star review. Bye! Bye.